All righty, all righty. What is up, everybody? I am here. Um, just about to get into some practice. If you are watching the VOD after the fact, if you are a VOD watcher of this beautiful live stream on YouTube, type a comment down below with a number four. Okay, We're already on number four with these fucking... So, you know, it's like, if you don't know what day it is, you can just go into the comments and be like, oh, it's day four of, of this, I guess. You know, I was t I, we were doing random letters before, but, you know, you guys are going to be the ones keeping track of the numbers here, not me. So type a comment down below. Let me know what you think you're going to... Well, let me know how you think I'm going to do today. Uh, yesterday, I kind of fucking lost my mind playing this game for like five hours fucking straight. Um, and yeah, I kind of crashed and burned at the end a little bit. I was kind of losing my mind. Um, so I'm hoping it's not that dire today. We'll see. Uh, but let me know what you think is going to happen. Uh, what's up, uh, Penjis? What's up, No Dream? What's up, a Lucid Arc and Dorer? Welcome, guys. Hope you're all doing good. I feel good. Just in these first couple seconds of gameplay, I'm feeling solid. Feeling beautiful. Let me do the cheat code. I don't have my practice codes on right now. What's up, Dick Butters? So we're going to head over to, um... Go oh, magic crap. I think let's do some wizard peak and then let's do some blowhard and then let's do some metalhead. I actually, you know what? I should probably focus in on um, treetops and metalhead a little bit with my practice today. But we'll do wizard peak, blowhard, and then we'll do treetops, metalhead, and then some rat, and then run. that'll be my warm up today. Also, this guy I always fuck up. Like, you're not supposed to jump on him, or maybe you are. It's like, I don't know. Kind of sus. What's the shit of, um, the fucking El Pollo Loco, or Los Pollos Hermanos? He's like, but you are sus. <laughs> oh yeah, but you can call me sus. <laughs> My name is Gustavo, but you can call me sus. <laughs> you guys remember that meme? You guys remember that? What's up, Jack? What's up, uh, Dad Kula in Stockholm? Brandon? Going along the way. Bought a PS1, inspired to play casually, enjoy. Enjoy that dick butter. God luck, thank you, Dad Kula. You know, Stockholm and Brandon and everybody in the YouTube chat. Hope you guys are doing good. What's up, Twitch chatters as well? Sexy bitches reporting in. If you're naked, leave a fucking emote right now. Yeah, I hate when that happens. Sometimes he just fucking cucks you. But yeah, thanks for the good luck, Kirby. Kirby Boo Boo, what's up, Necro and Gwendolyn? Hey, hey. Oop. Remember when I was on world record pace and I just got like the weirdest jump there and then got cucked on that jump? That was a fun experience yesterday. What's up, dilly dilly fa- uh, dilly 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 dilly? Hope you're doing well. Oh, nice legs. What up, nice legs? You guys and your alts. You cute little motherfuckers. But yeah, shout out to No Dream for the first, uh, little, little bit of generosity today with a hundred bits. Here's hoping that we can, uh, you know, get something good happening. My friends. Hopefully I can earn a few more subs here, you know? <laughs> If not, that's all right. Hey, Penjis, how about a uh, fucking Josh's subathon, huh? Shit's dope. He's on day five. Dude is dude is committed. There's an unbanned request from Camille. <laughs> I'm not gonna bring it up right now, but you can tell you can type in the chat. What does it say? I'm curious. I'll I'll tell you what you what the ruling will be. Just type whatever they said. Give me the give me the context and then we'll figure it out. Cause I forgot what Camille did. It's funny. <laughs> what did we ban Camille for? And then what did they say? You got, the chat can decide with me. Okay, let's not go in here. Let's do some blowhard. Oh, this is the cap day. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering how much longer he was gonna go. Oh, damn, like five days. And every time I tune in, he's like. He's in pretty good spirits. He's like learning Jack 2 or whatever, or just like playing, talking and stuff. Like, 
He's kept it very chill, I gotta say. He'd, I don't know if he lost his mind or what. The ads. Hey, someone type uh, at Dr. Dilly Fi um, and then the link to my YouTube stream. Here, hold on. Let me try this again from the top. Oh, okay. There's the context. He was asking questions. We told him to fuck off and he said, fuck you. <laughs> he said, fuck off, you nerds. Yeah, I'm now, now it's coming back to me. And now what does the unban say? Oh, I have to remember to do a big jump here. I think, guys, I'm going to be honest. I'm playing good today. I think this first hour or two, I'm going to try to no reset because I've been really hardcore. You know, once I get done war warming up here, I've been really hardcore with my reset grinding. And it's really like, you know, I raided Ash yesterday and Ash was just chilling, no resetting. And they were getting great times as well. And I noticed this is like a phenomenon in like hardcore, like top level speedrun grinding. This happened with me uh, in Saboom in uh, 120 percent is I would just be kind of chilling, no resetting and just getting really good times and just having fun and not really trying to be a super hardcore grinder. And um, it netted more pause. It netted better results actually in the game than uh, Saboom just resetting for every little thing and Nestor skip and whatever. And so like, um, just it's just an interesting phenomenon how that works out. You know, just like the mindset being more relaxed and comfortable and just trying to have fun and then and then good things can happen. It's when you're really trying and really trying to force it that stuff just tends to go badly more often. It's just how it goes. What do you guys think about that unban request? Bex posted in the chat. Bex said, uh, there was a guy named Camille, if you guys remember Camille. Uh, he was asking a bunch of questions, being kind of annoying. Uh, and then we were like, stop asking questions, fuck you. You know, I was like, did my sarcastic thing with him. And, um, then he said, fuck off, you nerds. <laughs> so we banned him. And then the unban request says, unblock me, please. I watching all streams. I, you know what? I feel like, honestly, this is a deny. I feel like this is, is a deny, personally. I feel like that was not a, that wasn't really an apology. That's not an apology, for starters. Yeah, they're not sorry. They're gonna definitely continue just being annoying. Like, for sure. Yeah, one's in the chat for deny. Two for, two for bring Camille back. Yeah, this is a one for, this is a deny all day. Camille, if you really are watching right now, you should have apologized. <laughs> next time, next, hey, in the future, if you ever piss someone off, but you know, you want to make amends, you have to apologize, okay? <laughs> you fucking idiot. It's okay. So we dodged a bullet, you and I. We, we avoided another annoying situation, so. It worked out for both of us. Everything happens for a reason. We love you, Camille, but get fucked. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. And I know when when the fucking apologies aren't sincere, by the way. In the fucking unban request, because it'll be like it'll be like, sorry you didn't understand me, Deo. Sorry I was right. Sorry for nothing. <laughs> you know, people will type that shit too. <laughs> so that doesn't count as an apology. <laughs> yeah, democracy. I dude, the people spoke. They said deny. <laughs> But yeah, Dilly, you were complaining about the ads earlier. Um, watch on YouTube or subscribe if you have like a Prime sub. Those are your better options than watching Twitch with ads. Just so you know. Derek, what up? Yeah, the ego is so important. People be fucking dying on the most dumb hills. I really think, genuinely, I think it's just like a thing with how just some people are raised. And it's not necessarily like a bad thing. It's just like a, it's a byproduct of having like a really strong sense of justice. It's like, if you feel like I'm being unfair to you in my chat room, then it's like, well, guess what? This is like a, this is an unfair situation. I get to say shit and be wrong. And if you annoy me, even though you're right, you still get banned and that's not fair, but that's like how it works. And so when people have a really strong, when they grow up like, you gotta fight for what's right, you know, from their fucking dad that's like a fucking convict, you know, from committing arson outside of a bar, you know. They they grow up thinking like, you gotta fight for every fucking little thing. When reality is like, just let it go, man. Life is so much easier when you can just, even if you're right and you've been treated unfairly, if you can just let it go, dude, 
that's the you're fucking you you've you're already so far ahead of the curve if you can do that that takes such a level of not just not just like removing that ego and sense of justice but humility it takes humility to do that it really is a really is a virtue to just let something go you know even if you know you're right even if you know that you've been wronged or whatever I think I think people being annoying in a live stream is like a really good like um, it's a it's a really uh, it's a microcosm of that whole like train of thought. Cause who the fuck cares? You know what I mean? What like what happens in a chat room or whatever? Or if I get fucking if I if I misinterpret your message and I'm like oh fuck you whatever, and then you're like no but I meant it like this. I'm like oh what now you want to argue with me? Get banned. You know? It's a total microcosm of just let it go. You know, and that applies to not just a chat room, but it's like to everything in life. If you can be that way, it's it will it will help you, believe it or not. But some people are so stuck in uh, in feeling they had like they had to preserve justice, you know, for themselves or whatever, that they're willing to make their their lives difficult for themselves, you know. And you know what? Hey, if that's how you want to go through life, if that's if that's like what makes you happy in life is to fight like fucking unwinnable battles, basically. Like then go ahead, you know. I'm be my guest. I don't. I don't. I don't like to look at life that way. I don't like to look at life like everything has to be a fucking battle, you know. I'm. Th I'm like. I'm over here, Napoleon Bonaparte. I'm waving the white flag the moment anyone has an issue with me or whatever. Sorry. Yeah. Well, even if I'm wrong or right or whatever. Help. Oh, sorry, I offended you. When, the, when I notice that people are genuinely offended by me in my chat, which is rare. But when people are genuinely, I'll usually apologize. I'm like, hey, dude, look, I'm a dick or, or whatever. I'm sorry, dude. Like, hey, I'm not trying to, nothing's personal here. I don't care. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to avoid the confrontation, you know? And I think a lot of people look at that and it's like, it's like, oh, that's pussy shit. You got to be on your, you got to be like, a, you got to be like my convict dad that gets in fights over nothing at the bar. You know, you got to be like that. You gotta stand up for your girl. That's another one of those things. It's like if someone fucking, if you're walking with your girlfriend in public or something like your significant other and someone like, someone's like, hey, what's up, sexy? It's like, what do you do? Do you just keep moving or do you confront the person? Your answer to that tells, says a lot about like how hard you like to make things for yourself in real life. Cause that guy doesn't give a fuck if you, if you fight him or not, nobody gives a fuck. Guaranteed, I almost can guarantee in like 90% of situations where you're, where two people, two, two partners are with another and one of them gets catcalled, like the girl gets catcalled or whatever. I guarantee you the girl would just be like, you know, having been used to that with their life, they know that the correct strategy is to just ignore them, keep moving, yada, yada. But it's these guys that get their fucking bravado in their head. Oh, I gotta stand up for my girl. Dog, you gotta fucking stand up for what, dude? She doesn't give a fuck about you doing that. If she does, then that's really shallow, I think. I mean, love goes so much deeper than like fighting a fucking stupid. Okay, I'm gonna fight a stupid person to defend you. Like, it just doesn't make sense. It's like, that. it's below you, you know, to, to do that. It's just different outlooks on life, you know, and, and justice, specific, the whole, the whole concept of, of street justice, you know? The, the, the Twitch chat is a real, getting banned in a Twitch chat is a real, and like how you react is a real microcosm of that, I think. Anyways, just a bit of banter. <laughs> yeah, it's so pathetic. It's like, do you hear someone cat call it? Like if someone was like, yo, strawberry, nice tits, you know, as I'm walking by, I would be like, what the fuck, a weird ass, you know, just keep walking. <laughs> like. <laughs> be like, what the fuck was that? We like, and Sarah and I would laugh about something like that. But a guy that gets actually threatened by that, that's like, that shows a lot of insecurity. It's like, dude, who the fuck? This guy is, you know, dumbass, you know? But then it's like, oh, what the fuck? I got a defender. <laughs> so stupid. Just a bit of banter. Anyways, uh, let's continue practicing here. I'm going to do um, treetops. And then Metalhead, not Dry Canyon. Um, Beastmaker, I'm gonna take off my shirt also, I'm getting hot. I'm getting hot. Plug in my phone over here while I'm thinking about it. Nice. 
So yeah, so like I was saying yesterday, I got um, pretty heated, I would say. I think I took the grind a little too seriously yesterday. I think in my head, I'm like worried that like Ash is gonna snipe the world record before, before I have a chance at it, which could happen. But like, there's no rush. I have to remember that there's no rush with this. Like even if I don't get the record by this weekend or, or whenever, like I can keep grinding after that if I want. And, uh, I think what really helped me in my 120 grind um, was just was just relaxing. You know, I mean, it's so important to just like relax and you know try to have fun with the grind and just no reason. And like, it's okay if like not all your runs are great, you know. And when you're playing well, and the thing I fucked up is when I was playing well yesterday. And I think I'm playing well today as well. Um, the thing I fucked up is like, oh, I'm playing well, so we are gonna grind extra hard, and that really takes you down a path of insanity. It really does. And um, I'm glad I did that. I will say I'm glad I did it yesterday, but now I think I'm going to shift a little bit. I'm not going to be lazier about my runs, but I'm going to be more willing to uh, to know, especially my first couple runs of the day, I'm going to be more willing to no reset uh, bad runs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm locked in now. Shirt's off. I'm ready to party. I'm just going to try to keep... Oop. <laughs> Let me. Do <laughs> I'm going to exit Rhiannon for that. Um... I'm going to try not to be so um, crazy. I'll still reset and stuff. Like, I'll still probably put in a similar grind. But once things start getting, like, really, like, emotionally difficult, I think that's when I'll try to, like, kind of shift gears a little bit, perhaps. We'll, so, we'll see. We'll see what happens today. But, you know, just uh, keeping that whole attitude in mind there. Oops. Can I catch up here? I think I can. Yeah, I think I'll be able to recognize when... I think for me yesterday, I'll tell you like just from what I experienced yesterday versus today. What's up, Scuffle Muffin? I think... Um, I think I knew when I was done yesterday, when I was being like really hardcore about resetting, I think I knew when like it was just not... Like I was getting tired by like the fifth hour and I was like, you know what, like I just have to know reset this. I don't necessarily want to go that fucking hard today. I might. But um, I think once it starts getting, I think the difference between t yesterday and today is I think I'll be willing to no reset if I'm like really in the reset vortex. Like I, if I miss, like, let's just say like I do three resets and none of them get out of uh, peacekeepers. I'll start, I'll, I'll be quicker to attempt a no reset. You know what I'm saying? Than I was yesterday. I'll be less steadfast in the, in the resetting approach or quicker to no reset. Does that make sense? Like kind of an oxymoron. So, you know, I mean, I just, the, the goal of today is, isn't to like not be hardcore or anything. It is sort of to not be hardcore. Like I definitely do want to grind and try to get some good paces, but uh, the goal is to just not go crazy. Basically is to not like actually get like emotionally, like too emotionally invested in it and just, and try to keep it some degree of fun, some degree of chill. I want to have like just a crumb. I want to have it like be mostly like, you know, grind and like trying to get good paces, but then have that like that factor of like, okay, let's fucking just chill on this run. Let's just let's just take a breather. Let you know, no reset, chat, whatever. You know, practice this. Fucking been missing this. What's up, sport? I mean, we'll see. I mean, dude, like this is all. I'm just spitballing right now. I mean, we'll see like where where my heart takes me today. Of course, it's just like kind of um just mentally like assessing where I was at yesterday and just kind of coming to the conclusion that it was a little too much i think i i think i put a little bit too much on myself emotionally yesterday so i just want to address that today however it comes about you know and that's okay like that's part of this whole thing you know there we go yes yeah, dude i totally get it spora like when you're trying to get a fucking pb i mean it's like the same shit i'm dealing with it's like when you're trying to get a pb and you're like, all right, I'm going to, especially like when we're talking about like really high, high quality, high tier times here. It's like, you really feel like, all right, well, this run can't PB anymore. You get like halfway, a quarter way, halfway in. It's like, this run can't PB. I might as well reset, you know? But then it's like, 
I think early on being like, it's okay if this run doesn't PB. I think that's like, that's the the big question. Like, is it okay if a run doesn't PB? You know, that's like the, the good, the big question there. And I think yesterday the answer was no more, more often than not. Today, I, I would like to kind of make the answer a little bit more yes. I mean, sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no, you know? But just just tipping, just, I mean, it's like a balance, dude. It's like you're, the scales of like resetting and no resetting. Right? It's really something that like, I don't think I'll have like a total grip on until like I'm in the moment of a run and I know how I'm feeling and I'm like, and I know what's right for me and I know what, I, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you just gotta take it in from moment to moment. You can't, I'm like yapping, I'm over here yapping like crazy about it. Like you just gotta take it as it comes and just be, just know like, that's why I wanted to address it is because like yesterday I just went a little too hard is all I'm saying. Uh, that's like the TLDR. Yesterday I went a little too hard on, my, on myself, on my resets. And today we're just gonna go a little less hard. It's not even really that my approach will be that different. I think it's just acknowledging. It's just acknowledging it, I think is just all I'm trying to do. And then wherever my heart takes me, then that's that's okay, you know. That's it. You know, it doesn't have to be any deeper than that. Okay, I'm gonna exit. I don't feel like doing the whole metalhead fight. Let's do some rat and then let's do a run. I'll go ahead and do uh, this shit. Because, yeah, it was really eye open. I really want to reiterate this. It was super eye opening to me to raid Ash, and they were like, they got like 235 paces and mostly no resetting, mostly chilling, mostly chat, like, not like. I mean, they're trying their best, don't get me wrong, but it's like the, the attitude isn't like so fucking gung ho, like, oh, I have to, I uh, have to get this, you know. Like, I think me and Laura, Laura and I, I won't speak for her, but I feel like she's probably in a similar boat as myself, where, like, we're trying to, like, be really hardcore about, like, let's get this run, you know? It's like, sh no. <laughs> like, be, pa like, patience, you know? Be patient, have fun, do runs. Some of them will be good, some of them will be bad. Don't, I don't gotta, I don't, shouldn't be comparing myself to Ash or Laura too much, you know? On that note. Like, keep it fucking, you know, middle way Buddhist, you know? There's no rush. Even if Ash gets record before where Laura lowers it and it's tough, it becomes harder to get or whatever. Like, I, I shouldn't like change my whole grind or outlook just because of that, you know? Look at that, come on. That was a good attempt. Uh, new manager, Mac, love to see it. Next month you'll gift, oh, oh thank you. Hey man, I'd love to hear that. But yeah, good job on your uh, on the new job, Mac. We're all proud of you. Everyone post a cute emote for Mac. Oh fuck. Yeah, I think Laura's probably if I were to guess, like she's like going through something similar to what I'm going through, but like even harder, you know? Even more of that like pressure i mean she was the one she's the one that is having her world record challenge so there's a lot more like i think emotional ego implications it, it would be similar to like if i you know if someone was challenging my 120 record like there would just be a lot more emotional baggage for me there to try to improve the record when someone's like biting at my fucking ass you know and, and right now ash and i are really biting at her ass like with uh, the world with our grinds and that's, that's a lot of pressure for her. I mean, she's in a, I think she's in a fucking tough spot, com especially compared to Ash or myself. You know, Ash and I don't have anything to lose. You know, she really stands to lose, like something that I think she really identifies with is, uh, is her current PB in this category. And just her relationship to it and everything. So I, I, I respect it. Like, I, I respect uh, that she's probably going through it even harder than myself. But I don't want to like speak for her. I, I just want to reiterate. I'm not going to like sit here and fucking play Dr. Phil about her feelings. Like I have no idea. I really don't know how deep it goes for her. Is the truth. My rats are doing better today than they were yesterday. I'll say that much. It was such a funny irony that yesterday I was playing so hardcore and really trying to squeeze out the best paces I could. 
but then my like my rats were just objectively terrible. There was like my one of my worst days of rats yesterday. I just could not get consistent rats at all. So it's like funny. It's like all this work, you know, to like try to optimize levels and stuff. It's like it's like you got to keep it real. If your rats suck, I mean, you know, you got to just be real about that. Today my rats are feeling more comfortable. This is gonna be super weird. I think this will work. <laughs> That's fun. That's what you have to do when the rat is really far off to the right. Or is even a little far off to the right. You have to aim for that pillar. Like even here, because it's too far to hit the uh it's too far to the right. Cause even when the rat is too far to hit the uh the corner. Like this will work. This will be fine. Yeah, that was too much in the middle, so I get the early proxy. You can tell when Spyro gets the proxy before touching the corner. You don't want that. No, that was that was off off center on the setup. Thank you for the good luck, Ash. It was nice raiding you yesterday. You really um, you really uh, opened my eyes yesterday with your uh, with your grind to like I need to chill out a little bit, you know. So thank you for being a. Uh, a beacon of of, um, of of humanity for me, so to speak. The truth is, <laughs> I know you don't want to hear this, but the truth is, is Laura and I are so scared. I mean, I'll speak for myself, not Laura. I'm so scared that you're just going to lower the world record, like, like, before I even come close, you know? But hey, you know what? Like, I'm trying to, like, be a little bit more Buddhist. First of all, that might not happen. Second of all, that's okay if that happens. Like, I shouldn't let that fear like a, like change my grind like make me feel like i need to be in a rush to get world record i think that's sort of what i was feeling yesterday is that like we got to get this it's like if we don't do it today like when are we gonna get like you know this like the storyline or whatever matters so much it really doesn't you know like my storyline is not gonna be changed just because someone else like gets a gets a good time or something you know it really shouldn't be that way this is a this is always this is always even the even with light the light competition that's happening now. It always has to remain a solo venture between myself and the game. Uh, that's what I love about this hobby is that like I don't have to be like constantly like feeling like I'm battling someone, you know. And I think I was getting that a little um, fudged up in recent memory. So yeah, what's up, Juicy Nana? Been watching the grind. Of course, that's easy for me to say and hard to like really like internalize as well. So that's, that's another thing. And by the way, Scuffle Muffin, I think I said that earlier. Thank you, Scuffle Muffin, for the resub and Juicy Nana. Juicy says, been watching the grind on YouTube, wanted support. Thank you for that. Thank you for being a, a, a star YouTube watcher and coming over to Twitch and dropping a sub. That means a lot to me. You don't know how segments work in this game, but I'd love a segmented run with all the strats I use in an actual run. Uh, they, you know, segmented runs aren't really like a thing so much because tasses are so much easier to make nowadays than they used to be. So um, there is an any percent task that was recently made by Toasted Cat um, and others that you can see uh, reacted to by uh, Ash and Laura at ESA recently. So you can look up any Spyro any percent ESA to see that. Um, and then also, uh, there was a 120 task made by, I think Pete, was it, uh, Pete plays 100 or whatever? I don't know. Pete guy 100. So there are tasks you can watch, uh, just not like segmented runs like that. Segmented runs are kind of an old, old school thing. Not, not so popular as they once were. The trio fight for world records fun to watch as Saboom and Deo. Yeah, dude. And, and Saboom and Chris, for that matter. What's up, Chris? Good to see you. I, you know, I think it's for me, like, I look at it like a viewer as well, that it's like, man, I want to make this interesting. I want to make this, like, battle, this three-way battle, like, interesting and, like, really, like, get in there and whatever. But it's like, dude, like, I got to not look at it like that. I got to not think about the storyline so hard. I got to not think about the script, so to speak. I gotta not look at it like as a viewer. I gotta look at it because that's all just that's all external. You know, I need to be intrinsically uh, motivated. 
That's number one. That was that was the big thing I learned grinding 120 over the years is that I need to not be motivated by someone else being good or challenging my time or fighting or battling with someone else. The more I'm like motivated by that, then the more difficult I make it for myself because I'm like constantly comparing myself and it just it builds a lot of insecurity when when you're when you feel like it's like this intense competition which it's really not if we're being honest it, it is just each of us and our own experience with the game sure we might pick up strats from each other or like be like oh that's cool you know might get a little jealous of one another like i'm definitely jealous of ash right now no doubt about it ash just putting down the 35 dream weavers with like no resetting and stuff like that is that is i'm ge i'm genuinely jealous of that but I can't let that get in the way of like, I can't let whatever my human ego side of things like get in the way of my my uh, enjoyment of the game. That's that's the key right there. What's up Chris and Jordan and everybody? So yeah, a lot of like mental uh, ego shift stuff happening in my mind, uh, you know, since yesterday. Yesterday, I think I went just a little too hard, I think emotionally, both with like resetting a lot and with um, emotionally struggling, uh, just with my, my outlook on the grind and what I was trying to accomplish. There it is. There it is. Okay. I think let's do a run. I think let's quit yapping. Let's quit hitting this. I think I've done enough rats. I think let's do a run. Let's try to let's try to really just be chill. Let's be let's be nice to ourselves. Let me be nice to myself today. And just try to enjoy the game. We're gonna try to no reset these first this first run or two. We'll see what happens. But I'm gonna follow my heart and I'm not gonna like let myself go down a dark path today. That's my goal. Three, two, one, go. Let's get it. Okay, rolling. Oh, it's been peaceful. What's up, Chori? Thank you for the good luck. Give my hands a kiss. Give the chat a kiss. <laughs> there we go. Gotta give Billy a kiss. Billy. Yeah, you can kiss him for me. Good idea. Mmm. Thank you, uh, Gwendolyn and Blue Eye and Floofer and everybody. Spire 3 is sick for casual play. Agree? What if I just said no? It's like, no! You're not allowed to casually enjoy a video game. Fuck you. <laughs> Wrong! <laughs> Look at this guy fucking having fun with a video game. Fucking crazy. <laughs> Weird. Why are you guys getting mad at him? I'm just joking. We're just joking around. Man, you guys get so confrontational. Um, what was I saying? Um, not about being allowed. I'm asking if you think it's an awesome game. Uh, yeah, I do think uh, Spyro 3 is an awesome game. I think it's an awesome game. Three, two, one, go. Man, the chat, the chat drama is, I, I crack one joke at someone's expense and now the whole chat is drama mode right now. Drama alert. Get Keemstar in the chat. <laughs> you guys are silly. That is, since we since I mention it, um, I think another thing that um, I I should in the spirit of being more chill and relaxed with this grind, um, I. It's not. It's not that I don't want to like sh like joke around and be sarcastic with people in the chat, but I don't want it to start affecting me emotionally. I think yesterday I did, I did get so like, 
I got a little emotionally affected, I think, by my by the way I was reacting to chat. I really caught it's not you guys' fault per se. It's more like I caused that within myself when I get a little too over the top with like fuck you, you know, like what the fuck do you mean by that? You know, just just being like just being too crazy about that. Like it, it's definitely like I gotta there's a line somewhere there, some gray line of like keeping it keeping it lighthearted, you know. That I need to remember exists. For the sake of my own, like, you know, keep, keeping the mental health and the chill vibes, like, strong here. With with the grind. Now, that's not to say I'm not gonna fucking make fun of you guys or anything. It's just, uh, you know, to not let it affect me emotionally. To not, like, get so, like, to not take it too far in that way. Oh my god, come on. Yeah, don't bully me, I'll come. No, don't worry, I'll bully you guys. Thank you for the good luck, Scott. Appreciate the kind words. What's up, Ink? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, me too. We'll see what happens. You want to try a Spyro game, but you started with Legend of Spyro? I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, try the original trilogy. Even if you don't have a PlayStation 1 or whatever, you can download it on emulator. It's not that much worse. Oh yeah, I see the chat is um, doing the thing, yeah, where it's uh, getting cut off. I see that. I think I have to refresh the uh, the source on OBS. Sometimes it does that. I think that fixed it. Yeah, we be rapping now. Rapping that chat. Microsoft Word. Dude, tell me you didn't feel like a fucking like hacker as a kid. Like a like a fucking like a tech genius as a kid. When you learned like that putting uh, like photos into a, like a word document or like a PowerPoint or something um, that you have to like go into the properties and select like, you know, in front of text instead of in line with text. That was like such a brain blast as a kid. Did anyone else have that experience? Yeah, it's like I'm a hacker now. Wow, well, I'm a fucking I'm an expert in computers now, you know, step aside, mom. Let me help you out with this, you know. <laughs> Why, dude, I wonder why that it was always the default. Like, you'd think the default would be, like, in front of text or something like that. It was always in line with text. I've never found, like, a valuable use for a photo being what's called in line with text, which essentially just gives it its whole fucking page, basically. <laughs> never understood the purpose of in line with text. You've always used EPSXE for PS1. Why is Duck Station a better choice? Well, you know, first of all, it's easier to set up. It's easier to use cheats. You don't have to go through that EPSXE screen and then open the game and then to change settings, you have to close the game and then go back into the EPSXE menu. You can just open the menu while playing. 
Um, so they're just basically TLDR. The interface is a lot better for starters. Secondly, the input delay and actual graphical options uh, at your disposal are, are easier. Uh, thirdly, controller configuration is is a bit easier. Granted, it works fine on both. Um, I mean, just everything about the actual interface and execution of Duck Station as an emulator is better than EPSXE. Even if you don't care about any of the interface or controller configuration or any of the shit, um, save states are easier, by the way. I was trying to help Getro do save states on EPSXE. He was like trying to solve a fucking riddle to do that shit. Um, but say that none of that stuff bothers you. Even even if none of that stuff bothers you about the interface or the UI or the, you know, the actual accuracy of Duck Station as an emulator is more accurate to a PlayStation than uh, than EPSXE. In fact, the reason why EPSXE, I should have just continued that probably. Next time that happens, I'll just continue. Um, the reason why EPSXE is the fastest emulator that's allowed on the leaderboards is because it emulates the game inaccurately. It actually gives you like better lag and loading times than it's than it's really supposed to than a PS1 would. So it's because of its inaccuracy that it makes it a faster emulator to speedrun on. Which is really, which is really stupid. <laughs> like, but anyways, three, two, one, go. At least that's how I understand it. Like, I look, I'm no fucking like emulator developer or anything. That's just how I understand it. Keep in mind, I don't play on emulator. I don't use these emulators a lot. I just use like, you know, BizHawk to take photos and stuff and Spyro for my thumbnails. And that's the extent of it for me. Sometimes I'll play a mod on Duck Station. But yeah, just in terms of UI, input delay, accuracy to a place to an actual PlayStation, Duck Station really does have the best balance of all those things. Yo, why is it allowed on the leaderboard? Yeah, good question. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's like a legacy thing. It's one of those things where it's like some people only have that. It is, to be fair to EPSXE, one thing it does have going for it is it is the most common PlayStation emulator. Like it was the one that was around before any of these other ones were, you know, as far as I know. It's, it's probably the easiest one to run on any particular machine. So I think just for sake of, ex of accessibility, they allow it, but they only allow certain versions of it. You have to check the leaderboard. It's like kind of a mess. Emulators are a fucking mess. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. In the old Age of Empires 2, you found text files of the dialogue and changed it with funny stuff that showed you in-game. And that was your 12-year-old. Yeah, I know. Op opens the console command in, in Skyrim. Oh my god, I'm such a hacker. Game changing. Activate no clip in Half-Life 2. I'm a legend. You use just screen controls on mobile and you 100% the entire trilogy. That's very impressive. You should get like a reward for that. That's like next level. It's like, uh, it's like handicapping yourself. You think double jumping on Spyro 2 mobile is impossible? I mean, if you can press both, like the, if you can hold the X while pressing square, like use your two thumbs for that. 
And I guess it is possible. You you just wouldn't be able to use your directional controls very easily afterwards. You'd probably just have to double jump in one direction. By the way, Z-Ray, thank you for the uh, resub. Appreciate that. I'm like, you ain't, you ain't doing no walking double jumps, probably. Z-Ray says, go Deo, go. Thanks uh, thanks for the good luck and have fun today. You are always, thank you always for streaming. Damn, I cannot read shit. I appreciate that, man. Let's see if we can get a good uh, run going here. Thank you for the lurk dedicate. Thank you for the good luck as well. And Dim Lord. Okay, if this Peacekeeper sucks, I'm going to try to just make it happen. I'm. We're going to, you know, I'm telling myself now, like, let's not just... Uh, I've been resetting a little bit here. Let's get a run going now. You know, it doesn't have to be good. It's okay if it's not good. All right? Siona, thank you for the good luck. <laughs> this song be like tiddy tiddy. <laughs> Barely making that. Thought I might have bonked on that. But we're good. Congrats, Pablo. I'm gonna close my window a little bit. It's a bit bright. Just a smidge. Also starting to get like the... Starting to feel the seeds of a headache starting here. Uh, I might have to take some ibuprofen after this run. Same thing happened yesterday. I just had like a real like light headache that like kind of progressed the more I played. So you, I guess maybe like screen sickness you could call it perhaps. I gotta stop looking at my phone so much in the morning. I think that's part of the problem. Looking at porn. Oh, that is so unlucky. But at least I got that. I'm gonna keep it moving. Sounds like a vibe, Jay. Welcome, my friend. every gem here because I might skip the 15 at the end. I think I recharge like 10 times there. If you take a pill to suppress a headache and then drink coffee in the morning, it will return. I mean, like, I'm not going to question your medical, uh, you know, credentials here. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> like, I'm sure there is some sense to what you are saying. I just don't really want to. I don't feel inclined to take what you're saying at face value. Take take medical advice at face value from my chat room. Just just my it's just my two cents. I'm sorry if that offends you. Call it a rebound headache. Yeah, I think when I get headaches, it's mostly from screen sickness and drinking too much coffee. Or just looking at screens too much, I mean. 
So, and usually in that case, like taking ibuprofen doesn't really help a lot. Like it helps a little, but like, you know, your brain's just tired of looking at screens. Like no amount of ibuprofen is going to change that. In my, in my experience. You get headaches because of your posture, you think? I mean, my posture isn't great, as you can tell. I sit forward with a bit of a hunch. Like, hold on. I could see where a posture like mine, a forward-facing posture, or forward-hunched posture, is possibly bad. Uh, one thing I've, I've like, kind of learned, uh, or, or sort of, like, this is, again, this is very, like, pseudo-science here, so just, just, like, disclaimer. But one thing that I've sort of picked up on in, in video gaming, like, trying to competitively, like, speedrun, is that, um... I just play more with more active focus when I'm sitting forward. I could sit back in my chair like this, and that would probably be better for my headaches and stuff. Like uh, my uh, my head, my brain juices would be able to you know chill a bit more. But uh, you know, sitting forward like this just it just uh, engages me a lot a lot more into like each movement that I execute. It's just a preference. I I don't really like uh, playing like trying to do something like fast or optimally when I'm sitting back in a chair. But I've noticed that every speedrunner is different in this regard. Some speedrunners love just kicking back in a chair, or like, if you watch Anchovy, she like sits in like a fucking like bed of pillows, kicking back. And I think that does, that's part of what allows her to like really like just go for like 8, 12 hours at a time, you know? Is that she like doesn't do like as uh, intense of like a physical engagement with the game. Not to say she's not like playing the best she could or anything, it's just her preference to, to sit that way. And I think there's like benefits and drawbacks in that way. Like if you sit back in like a chill, like a nice posture, you could say, like with nice, you know, back support from your chair, nice head support. That will definitely allow you to like do whatever task you're doing for a lot longer. But I, I like to just sit forward and like really get the front of my frontal lobe engaged with what's happening. Just so I can really, and, it, and so the cost of that is like, I can't necessarily grind like as long. That's just one reason why I don't grind as long as other people. Like three hours, three to five hours is like my limit. Like sitting this way, playing this way, talking actively, you know. It's just how I like to do it. But I don't have any, you know, I have a good chair, so I don't have any like um, back problems or anything like that from sitting this way. That's usually the reason why most people try to correct their posture is just for their back. But if, if you have a chair with like a lot of um, cushion in it, like it, you know, my back doesn't hurt. This, oops, did not mean to charge up that. The curve monitor is reduced eye strain, interesting. I never tried using like a curve mon or like tried using a curve monitor for like an extended period of time. And I also I don't game on a monitor either, so or I don't play this game on a monitor. Technically, my CRT is a curve monitor. It's got like the little uh, con or convex you know, from the glass. So yeah, I have a curve monitor too. Asus ain't got nothing on this shit. My JVC. Yeah, I'm very particular about my TV's height. Most people have their TVs too low, I've noticed. Or at least in my experience, like when you set up like a, a CRT somewhere, it's like you just put it on like a little table and then look down at it. I don't like that. If you have to look too much down, you, you should be able to like, with whatever way you sit, it's very important that your monitor is like, the middle of it is at your eye level, just looking facing forward that you don't have to look up or down at it because that will really strain your eyes after after just this come on come back oh jeez.
Okay, I think I'm back. I am back. Is the uh, YouTube... I'm back. Is the YouTube stream still up? Who's on YouTube right now? Uh, Saxer said I'm back. Can you guys see me? It's all right. That run was whatever anyways. YouTube's good. Okay, cool. Sounds good. By the way, uh, speaking of YouTube... Yeah, that was my bad, by the way, everybody. Speaking of YouTube, we have um, some super chats here that, since my run's dead, let me just shout those out. Elaine with 599 says, uh, good luck on the runs today. Strong gameplay from yesterday. Yeah, we'll see if we can uh, continue that. And Bad Mojo with $10 saying, been watching for months. I watched zero ads, so this is my way to thank you for that. Thank you, Bad Mojo and Elaine. Really appreciate you guys. All right. Um, so yeah, let's just do another run. That's fine. No big. It's my, it, by the way, that was my fault. My internet disconnected because I use a stupid fucking Wi-Fi adapter, but it should be good now. Three, two, one, go. Anyways, um, what was I talking about? Do you guys remember what I was talking about? I was talking about some deep shit, but I forgot. Let me scroll back up. Okay, rolling. Oh, oh yeah, it's I was talking about uh, curved monitors. Yeah, I was talking about you gotta have whatever uh, gaming setup you have, it's so important that you have it at your eye level. Like, you put your fucking TV on top of like books and shit if you have to. Yeah, the TV height's so fucking important. Like, even like an inch or two of difference, like, really changes the whole experience. Twitch is down. Is it really? I see people in my Twitch chat. I am noticing that uh, my uh, my chat is like the the chat client I'm using is like dumping messages. But it's all right. Seems everything seems fine now, so it's all good. Yeah, I did. I did. It was my bad. I disconnected earlier, but we're back. Luckily, I didn't have to like make a whole new YouTube stream or something. Usually, that's what you have to do when that happens. So luckily, that all worked out. But yeah, I was gonna say I remember as a kid I would like go to Sears or like just any department store, Target, whatever. And they'd have like the video game like section. You know, your mom would just put you like my. I'd be like, I'm gonna go to the video game section, like play like the Crash Bandicoot demo or Sonic Adventure demo. And it would always be on like a fucking. They would always put the fucking screen for the for the kiosk like way at the top of the shelf. Does anyone remember that? Like, yeah, you could grab the controller right there, but like the screen would be. You'd have to like look up like this to like literally that hard. You'd have to look up like this to play. Like what the fuck? And so, like, I think they do that, they do that intentionally, so that way it actually, it would hurt your neck. Like, after, like, literally, like, five minutes of doing that. I remember that so vividly. So, I, I remember as a kid, because, you know, my mom would be shopping, you know, and so I'd be in that video game section for, like, an hour, maybe. And so I would, like, play a demo, and my neck would start hurting, I would look down, just for, like, <laughs> for, like, a minute, you know, and, like, pause, like, look down, you know, maybe look at some games on the shelf, pretend like I'm not in massive amounts of pain or anything, and then, like, all right, am I ready? Am I, okay, look back up and keep playing. <laughs> it's funny. That had to, I don't know if that was, like, an intentional, like, uh, design thing by them to do that. But yeah, that phenomenon of like you being strained by the viewing angle, it exists even on a very small level with whatever monitor you're using. You may not be breaking your neck or anything, but it definitely can contribute to like eye, eye strain. And yeah, like I said, I feel like on average, I've learned that most people, most setups have their monitors lower than they probably should. That's my uh, experience, especially with CRTs. Like, you know, you put a CRT on a shitty like little desk or something, you're looking down at it. It's like, especially if it's a small one, you got to really b crank that thing up to get it to eye level. With all the fucking encyclopedias under it and everything. Yeah, I'd be in the video game. I'd be like seven years old, taking my shirt off. 
Like, all right, chat, let's do this. All right, we're going to get into another one here. I'm going to really try to adjust my mindset on this one, just talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, that's I can confirm that Pablo uh, Saboom does generally have his TV like in a looking down position but he also you know towards the end of his grind he transitioned to uh to doing like a hybrid standing slash sitting setup so for a lot of his runs that he did towards the end of his grinds um he would be fully he'd like fucking stand up to, you'd see him in the camera standing up and playing like that like pretty crazy stuff so he even he was thinking about stuff like this for sure Yeah, Saboom has more. When he does sit, he has a, even more of a hunch than I do. That is true. Yeah, those, whatever. I'm stuck with you? Oh, man. Well, you know, good thing I like you, white bait. Saboom has done uh, several different songs on his YouTube channel. You can check out. There's a really funny one called Speed Running the Rap from like that he made back in like 2015. Spyro. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Come on. Oh, yes. Barely. Dude, I got too lucky there. That honestly should have failed. Is such an old command by the way that command must have been written back in like 2016 or something that command was probably written before i had world record in this game <laughs> like in like 2018 or some shit you guys mentioned Saboom. I actually emailed him yesterday. I'm part of... I'm, I'm in a... I'm in a, a, a rare group of people that are uh, on a periodic email list from him. He'll just send out an email like once or twice a month uh, just talking about like how his life's going, like what he's up to. A lot of it has to do with like him uh, being on different sort of, sorts of adventures around like wherever he's exploring, you know, living a quote-unquote homeless life, you know. 
um, you know, street performing and his different interactions with people. Like he, he told one story in his email about like uh, about this group of girls that like came up to him. Hold on. About a group of girls that came up to him, and uh, one of them was like a particularly drunk, and she was like, she was like, "Do you take? Do you take? How much for a request?" And he said zero dollars, and she's like, "Wow, really?" Like, and then they like converse about what song, you know, and they eventually ended on uh, decided to do a, a Paramore, like some Paramore song, and while Saboom is, keep in mind, Saboom isn't like he didn't have any instrument; he was just standing there singing on the street corner. That's what he does, just acoustic, fully acoustic. And uh, he'd start singing this song, and the the drunken girl was, was like trying to sing along with him, and it was like this. He said in the email, it was like this awkward thing for the entire song, and he would like forget the verse because he's so distracted by her and stuff. And uh, you know, they awkwardly got through this like three four minute like Paramore song, which probably must have felt like an hour to him. And uh, you know, <laughs> they went on their way. So just. It's funny, like, hearing, like, little stories like that from him. About different people he runs into, like, along the way of, of whatever, of, like, his life. But yeah, he's doing good, man. He's doing good. To those who are curious. You don't, give, dude, you don't even need to give him a flute. He plays a hand flute. He's really good at making that whistle noise with his hands where you like blow between your thumbs and it's like, you know, like makes like an owl kind of noise. I don't know how to do that shit. He's actually really good at like that hand flute, you could say. I'm the only thing left interesting to watch. Sigh. I mean, it. That is like the least complimentary compliment I've ever received. That was the that was the most insult laden compliment I think I've ever received. That's the most backhanded. Oh, thank you for the backhanded compliment. I'm glad you're here either way. I know I don't- I, I know my streams don't hold a candle to your favorite hentai. Or to your favorite Markiplier video coming out or anything, but... Hopefully I at least am the next best thing. Honestly, Vivi, you make me feel so validated because like you're an actual streamer as well. When other creators come into my chat and just like to just lurk and just hang out, that makes me feel like very, uh, it makes me feel like I'm not terrible at what I'm doing. In the grand scheme of things. So thanks. By the way, very, very uh, funny uh, Fallout 4 stream today. Or yesterday, whatever that was. I don't remember. I have no sense of time. Surely you understand. Oh. Fucking cla classic American talking to person on the other side of the world. Yesterday or today or whenever the fuck that was, man. What the fuck even is time? <laughs> Any thoughts on Spyro fan music? Dude, I fucking hate Spyro fan music. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Spyro fan music is pretty cool. There's actually a bit of a community for it. Um, there, there's like, there's a couple guys that used to be in my chat that made a uh, Spyro, Spyro music all the time. They like really, I remember like they really wanted me to collaborate with them, and I was like, okay, fine. Like I like added. It was at the time I was playing vibraphone and like making some music video -y stuff. So I was like, all right, sure, I'll collab on something, and it was fun. But uh, overall, um, you know, it's mostly just people just fucking around with the Spyro sound font in like FL Studio or whatever. And uh, and that's cool. 
It's like you can fucking make, you can fucking smash your dick on the keyboard with the Spyro sound font, and it'll sound probably pretty good. Is the Spyro music like? It's it's really it's not that complicated, you know. It's like if you can play a dominant scale, you know, and play like a one four chord progression, you're playing the Spyro music, you know. You just get creative with the melodies and some of the percussion a little, and then, wow, okay, now you're, you know. So it's it's not like the to me in my mind it's, it's the Spyro fan music. It can it can be it can get deep and interesting and creative and cool, but not every track really hits that for me of of that that sense of originality for me. In in all honesty, just some tracks are better than others. It's the nature of fan music, but I'm glad that there is a community of of fan music makers. Most most Spyro fan songs you're gonna hear are pretty are pretty pretty good vibe, pretty cool. That's why I always push back. By the way, on like the on topic of the simplicity of the music in this game. Um, like, that's why I always kind of push back on whenever people are like, Oh, Stuart Copeland was a genius, you know? It's like, yeah, he made some good songs, some iconic melodies that live with me through my entire life now. You know, those, these songs don't, you know, they, they stand the test of time. But, you know, this isn't like a genius, in my mind, this isn't like genius level music production or anything. This is just like, oh, this is like, this is just a fun vibe. And music doesn't have to be like more than that, you know? Music doesn't have to be like some genius undertaking, you know? Doesn't have to be like fucking Mozart, obviously. Yeah, the music's in this in this game is dope. That's what I'm trying to say, it's do it's dope uh, for its for uh, for what it is, you know. And just the fact that I like that I enjoy playing this game with the music on still even after all these years. I mean, that should tell you all you need to know. You know, like I still vibe out to the music in this game when I'm playing. I definitely don't listen to it on my own time or anything. But uh like just the fact that I'm not tired of it should should tell you should tell you enough that I do like it. Dude, the, I honestly, the same shit I say about the music in this game, I, I would say the same thing about the police, you know, like as a band, like, yeah, I mean, they're, they're a good rock band, you know, whatever. Message in a bottle. Cool song. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's nothing too, uh, it's nothing to, in my mind, it's nothing like too, um, like groundbreaking. It's not like something that's like, wow, this is something really unique, you know, for its time, I'm sure it was, you know. It's just not like, all right, like, we're never going to ever hear music like that again, you know, or we'll never hear Spyro music. You know, it's, it's I don't know. The level of impact on me isn't like as uh, pronounced as other music that I've experienced in my life. That's all I'm saying. What splits am I using? I'm using my, um, my PB splits. 3728. Anyways, I want to be very clear. I'm not talking shit on the police or on the Spyro music. I'm not talking shit. It's all it's all good stuff, you know. Jam on to whatever you to whatever you want, you know. Yeah, dude, it's like the classic police song strategy. It's like you're just playing some random like 70s like, you know, boomer like rock and then just randomly it just turns into reggae for like, it turns on the floor on the floor fucking, fucking dance hall for like a fucking second and then goes back to like classic rock mode. It's just funny how the police is like that. 
But yeah, I mean, for the time, I'm sure that was like kind of groundbreaking to do that. Nowadays, it's just kind of like, all right, well, whatever. I mean, the, the landscape of music is so vast now, like nowadays. It was back then, but it's even like so much, it, even now, like one's taste in music can like fucking be so like wildly varied. Now you can just go on YouTube and just go down a rabbit hole of just like related videos that just completely blow your mind, you know? So with, with like that modern kind of context, it's like music like from Spyro or from the police, like they don't really like blow my mind, you know? But they're good. That's kind of all I'm trying to say. Because once again, music doesn't have to be like some mind blowing thing. It can be whatever, whatever. If it's a good vibe, that's all it needs to be. Yeah, that is a fun thing to do, Alex, is um, is going through, like, um, projects that Stuart Copeland's been a part of and, like, and listening to hear, like, what elements of, like, Spyro, like, existed in his projects before and after Spyro. Uh, he, he did another thing called, uh, I think it's called, like, Orchestrali, which sounds very, like, Spyro-esque, but, like, with an orchestra. used to love dubstep now i can't stand it i'm the same way since you mentioned the word dub i used to love dub reggae i would listen to like reggae in dub it would be called like dub versions of like reggae songs like on like a fucking pandora radio all the time while i was snowboarding i remember those were the days high school man or while i'm stoned i think if you listen to any genre of music like too much it just wears on you whether it's the most intricate intense thing ever or or if it's like really simple just like you know fucking dub reggae like just you know it, it'll just wear on you if you listen to the same thing over and over and over you gotta you gotta keep it like uh you gotta keep it varied with music you gotta follow your heart nightcore is cool i like uh i've, I've been digging like break core like going down break core rabbit holes that's fun and I got, I, I sort of got into it because I, I saw that one meme that was like break core in a nutshell, you know, and then you just kind of start looking at like related content around that. You start finding some like really tiny YouTube channels and stuff that just had like crazy fucking songs that must have taken forever to make, you know. They're just like this like glitched out like crazy fucking drums and stuff, you know, just absolutely like mind bending shit. Yeah, d dude, every, like, dude, once you start talking about, like, whatever blank word core, that's how you know you're, like, getting deep into, like, a genre. Or, like, into, like, a, into, like, a niche of a genre. Whatever thing core. Yeah, for sure. Oops. This is a pretty slow blow hard. I didn't even go for the IL strat, which I really should have. Probably losing a little time, but no biggie. Could have saved back all my time there if I had just focused and done shit correctly. Freeze champ, thank you for the good luck. Started adding sax to songs, dude. I love the... Um, what is it called? Moon Hooch? I love those uh, little like two, three person bands that have like the cone coming out of the uh, the berry sacks. And they play like dance music. They'll like cover fucking like um like like fucking like 90s fucking shit like with it. Like better off alone or whatever. Yeah, Nightcore is dope. It, gets, it starts to get into that like sort of like anime girl fucking type vibes yeah, like every like album is like some anime person on it <laughs> type of thing yeah covering like Daft Punk you know with the fucking uh, with the berry sacks and a fucking cone coming out they walk into a Starbucks <laughs> <laughs> you 
You guys, I'm, I'm gonna start listening to some more Nightcore now that you guys are talking about it. I might go down that rabbit. I might get drunk and go down that rabbit hole myself. DV, don't tempt me. Dude, the Numa Numa song is such a banger. It's such a feel good for me. Is Breakcore just jungle? No, I don't think so, but it's pretty similar, yeah, to the jungle, which is similar to drum and bass. But they're, they all have like some distinctions. Breakcore, I would say, is probably a little bit more uh, eclectic. Dreamcore just lo-fi. That sounds right. I mean, dude, there's like, there's definitely crossover between like a lot of the things you guys are t saying here. It's not like they're all so distinct. I mean, they're just different words to describe similar things. I've been, since you guys are talking about like drum and bass, liquid drum and bass and stuff like that, I've been enjoying like um, PlayStation and N64 um, like liquid jungle drum and bass remixes. There's like there's like hour plus long mixes of uh, PS1 songs that like are sort of DJ'd to have like uh, to be just a little mixed together nicely with like a liquid drum and bass kind of whatever jungle kind of vibe to them. Definitely check those out if you guys, if you guys haven't. I'm sure you guys see those in your recommended. Find some pretty cool like um, songs from games that you didn't even know about listening to those. <laughs> Intelli- that's another descriptor. Intelligent drum and bass. Like, at a certain point, these words just mean nothing. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what the fuck you mean intelligent, bro? I'm stoned as hell. <laughs> John, genre names, especially as they get more and more niched out, are just so funny. What's up, Jadio? Thank you for the good luck. Oh, come on. I'm gonna grab this. I don't know how many gems I need. Really have not been paying attention this run. Just kind of vibing out. I might get a little bit more hardcore on my next few runs, but for now I'm just enjoying kind of no reset in this. Just a real stark contrast from yet from yesterday's attitude. Oh, can I make this? Oh, that is death. That's death right there. That sucks. Can I make it? Hold on. Oh, oh my God. I'm alive. Dude, I am so in this right now. Watch me not die. Okay, hold up. If I don't die in Guantan, I'm a legend. We got this. I'm gonna start listening to some avant-garde butt sex. Yeah, there you go. Oh my god, I couldn't even get in there. That's like free too. You should not get hit there. Whatever, at least I got killed earlier rather than later. That's actually kind of a time save compared to getting hit inside. Got the blue. But yeah, it feels good to just do a run and not worry about it being, like, amazing or anything. <clears throat> Intelligent fart core. <laughs> Freeze champ, thank you for the raid, man. Welcome. Yeah, plus 20. I could've- I could've, with a good bog, I could've gotten ahead there, but... Alas. I, I really am seeing, even on a kind of just a YOLO no reset, I am seeing the potential at PB still, despite that. I got to remember that they're like these splits are really tough and there's but there are like those like little windows of time save that I got to I got to remember for when I am being more hardcore, like blowhard is one where I can save like four seconds. Bog is one where I can save like maybe up to 10 seconds if I'm over gemmed and taking shortcuts and stuff. Quickly. Sp 
Pete Brony is more about style and attitude. I'd, yeah. Hold on. Here's some style for you. Oh, come on, dude. One day I'm going to get that. On a, on a fucking fuck it, no reset, I'm going to get that one day. You can go through that fence. You have to, like, time the X-Press perfectly, though. Yeah, there was some there was an attempt at style and attitude for you there. Oops, I should not have done that. It's fine. Playing like a little silly bitch all over here. Eat a blue gem, dude. Aren't the blues like such a vivid and deep, like dark blue color? Like the color on those blues is just gorgeous. Yeah, that's that's that royal blue right there. Royal shit right there. I feel like a king with these blues right now. Thank you for the good luck, Jupe. Royal Butt Sex. <laughs> New band name. Come on. Oh, damn, I almost got in there. That was close. Just gonna grab these. Burn some. I think I'm over gemmed. I, like I have not been paying attention to my gem count, but I'm just gonna burn these 15 here. Yeah, that's a cool emote. Never seen that one. The colors. No. Dog, what? I can't hit them. Dude, I'm so ass at this game. D Hold on, wait, live? Oh my. I might just reset, I don't know. I think I'm kind of done at this point with this run. I'm gonna reset. <laughs> I'm done with the, I'm sorry. Hold on, let me, do, let me at least do the out of bounds here. Just for emotional support. There we go. I needed that. I'm gonna reset. I've had enough of that one. Play it for funsies? No. I I personally feel now I don't feel like I feel like I need to justify myself because I was talking about no resetting and stuff and then I reset. But I mean come on. Oh, whatever. If you guys don't agree with that, I'm sorry. I, I was I was feeling the reset there. I, I wasn't because here's the thing. Like at a certain point, it's like it goes from like, oh, I'm ch I'm having a chill, fun run to like hey, now I really have to push this out. You know, it, it really kind of the vibe changes depending on how badly things go, you know. And there's something to be said for like really pushing out runs, too. But, you know, let's, I, I didn't really feel like really pushing that one out. The, the, the vibe definitely shifted there for me, and I didn't want to, like, make it... I'm really trying to make things not emotionally difficult for myself today, if that makes sense. It's not really even about no resetting and resetting. It's about, like, taking the, the path of just most chillness for me, you know, if that makes sense. But yeah, now since I did reset that one, that's all the more reason to try to no reset this one as well. I know I don't have to justify it, but I feel inclined to. Just so just so I can give you guys some insight into like, dude, he was just talking about no resetting and then he reset that run. What a fucking fake ass bitch. Like that's my thought process. 
Chizzy, thank you for the uh, prime and the good luck. Really appreciate that. Love you, man. What's up, Marcus? Also, I've been saying this the past few days. I need a new fucking controller, dude. Dog. How did that miss? Not a, not a big deal. Oh. Will there ever be? Eventually, there will be. This is a discussion that kind of comes up from time to time. Is like, is like, you know, how are you gonna like? If you insist on playing on a console that's like 20 years old that no one makes anymore, and so speaking of like CRTs as well, that applies to. Like, in theory, won't they eventually run out one day? Like the like the demand will only like stay the same, you know, and the supply will decrease over time. Um, I think this is just my opinion. I think that by the time we run out of PS2s or you know controllers or whatever, T CRTs become so scarce that they're like this rarity that like cost hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars and whatever. I think by the time that time comes around, um, it it'll will be so far into the future, you know, like it could come sooner than I'm giving it credit for, but I feel like within the next century, like we're not gonna run out of PS2s, you know? In, in our lifetime, I feel like it's fair to say we're not gonna run it, unless there's like a big, I could be wrong. I'm willing to be wrong on this, but like the PS2 is one of the most produced consoles in video gaming history. They produce like so many millions of PS2s and there's still so many of them out there. That, I mean, I just, and it's the same thing with CRTs. Like they made so many millions of CRTs in the world that like even the ones that, even though they, a lot of them are broken and scrapped and thrown away, like there's still always going to be like so many of them still that are, that are being preserved that are that do still exist. That unless there was like a major event where people like all collectively decided to destroy PS2s or whatever, which I don't see that happening. Like I don't know. I mean, it just it doesn't feel like we're going to run out of these things in our lifetime. That's that's just what it feels like to me. Now, again, I might be wrong about that. I think it's still fair to to take a preservationist mindset about it to like really try to preserve these things. Um, I think that's totally totally good and cool, but I don't think it's a dire situation that we're gonna run out or that they're gonna be so scarce that we can't like play on console anymore at any point in our lifetime. Just my opinion. Sub some forty one. You say we can always make more CRTs. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I, I like I. I think that would be really cool if people made like, you know, CRTs. Still in the year 2024. The, from what I understand on that subject is that um, like the way environmental pollution laws and things like that, like the government will not let you make a CRT. Is, is how I understand that to work. Like it would have to be an underground business. It's not something that is like allowed by by law currently because it, it uses like scarce like materials and stuff like that and like radiation and I don't, I don't even know dude it's it's a crts are complicated things <laughs> that i don't understand and there's there's many reasons why people don't make them anymore and but one of them is that even though there is like a retro market for them um the reason why you don't see like many like third party like mom and pop like crt maker you know nerd people is that they are they are a very hard to make and b uh um the materials are uh, you know the laws around like building and materials with them are not really in favor of you so it's not to say that they can never be made again or anything it's just uh i think there's a lot there's a lot going against you if you want to be like a you know, if you want to capitalize on this retro market and start making your own custom CRTs for, for gamers like me, I would love that. But it seems like you have every hurdle to get over if you if you wanted to do that. That's that's all I'm saying. Do I feel like I've wasted 10 years of my life doing oh, sorry for the question? 
You're not sorry. You asked it anyways. Um, no, I don't feel like I wasted my life. I feel like what would have been a waste of my life is if I'd have never speed ran or, or not, never taken speed running as seriously as I did and um, instead became a teacher and was at a fucking high school, basically at a prison, uh, you know, every day for eight hours a day dealing with kids that don't give a fuck about what I'm teaching them. I feel like that would be more of a waste of my time than what I'm doing now. Oops. At least you guys are interested in what I'm doing. You know, if I were a teacher, like, I'm going to be dealing with, like, maybe 70, 80% of the kids in the classroom just don't give two fucks about what I'm telling them. And I'd have to wake up early, which is another downgrade to my current life. Three, two, one, go. So, yeah, no, there, I, I really don't have any regrets about playing this game as long as I have about stream. I mean... It's not just the game anymore. You know what I mean? It's like it's streaming. It's, you know, all that. This okay, community, no all you guys. Oh, so since it does all come from this game and my, you know, and my desire to speed run it. But, um, you know, the, the answer is that no, this, this, none of this was ever felt like a waste of time to me. Oops, I forgot to start the timer. That was a waste of time. <laughs> it's easy for a hobby like this to feel like a waste of time. Like even just watching right now, I'm sure that's probably why you asked. Is because when you watch reset after reset, it's like damn like all those runs are for nothing but they're not that's like the brain blast about it is that even though i make i haven't finished a run today everything i've done for the last hour and a half on stream it serves a purpose it, it entertains you guys it it makes me that much wiser about where i'm at just on this given day in my gameplay that informs my next run there's a lot to be gleaned from failing at something is the point it, it's easy for a failure to just feel like a waste of time but, you know, every failure leads to a success, and I think that's very true with what I'm doing here. Okay, rolling. Oh, it's been peaceful. You were driving earlier during the music genre. You recommend I look into hard style trance? Um, okay, sure. Is there a filter you can get that replicates the CRT look? Uh, yes, you can uh, use. So basically, if you plug in a retro con, if you plug any video game console into a modern TV, um, not via HDMI um, or DisplayPort, if you're using like a like an older console that uses like the you know composite output or component or S video or SCART or something like that. What you want to do is use an upscaler, all right? And if you're not familiar, I know a lot of you guys are familiar with this, but just so in case you don't know, when you, even though a lot of, um, you know, modern flat screen monitors have like the red, yellow, white inputs on them, they're, they're not in effect. Those, what those inputs are doing, what's happening inside the TV is there's a chip that converts that signal to a digital one. You see, what's happening on my PlayStation right now is that, um, it's an interlay signal. It's not a progressive scan signal. So the TV, if I were to plug it directly into a modern TV, it would have to convert it itself. So rather than making your TV do that process inefficiently and cheaply, because it's not really designed for that. It's just like, it's like, okay, we put the input there, but it's like a, the shittiest kind of upscaling you can get. You get like a stretched out. Yeah, if, if you guys have ever tried to plug this, like your PlayStation into a modern TV, you'll know the picture's all stretched out. The input delay is annoyingly bad. You know, it's just better to play on one of these old 4x3 CRTs. But why is because on a CRT, the, the picture doesn't have to be upscaled. Now, if you now to answer your question about can you get the look of a CRT on a modern monitor? The answer is yes, because um, if you buy an, a good upscaler that serves as an intermediary, you plug your PlayStation into an upscaler and then the upscaler into the monitor via HDMI. You don't, you make it so that the monitor doesn't have to do that for you. And if you buy a good upscaler, it will even have options to add what you're asking, what are called scan lines that add like visual artifacts and things that make your modern display, your computer monitor or whatever, look like a CRT when you're playing a game. So that was, a, I know, I don't know if you wanted that long of an answer, but that's the whole answer to that question. Yes, you can make modern uh, displays have a similar like looking effects to a CRT. Now, with that said, it's never going to be exactly like a CRT. You know? There is, you know, just by nature of upscaling, you know. A CRT doesn't have to upscale. It's a CRT produces what's called an interlay signal. And 
every modern flat screen um, LCD TV produces a progressive scan signal. And those just display what we see on screen in two entirely different ways. If you're curious, and I'm sure a lot of you guys already know about this stuff, but if you're curious about it, do check out, there's tons of videos on YouTube that really break it down and like show pixel by pixel, like what the difference is. And it's pretty staggering. Like, like with a with this CRT, it kind of blows your mind. Have you ever pointed a camera at like an old CRT and the shit is just flickering like crazy on your camera, but to your eyeballs, it looks fine. It's because these TVs play a trick on our eyeballs where an interlay signal is just displaying one line, one or two lines constantly uh, flashing across the screen to create what looks like a full picture, but it's really just one line going like this over and over, like really fast. It's really crazy shit. When you start looking into like how these fucking, how screens work, it's fucking crazy shit. Especially when we're talking about retro consoles versus modern stuff, like, and how to bridge that gap. It's, um, it's not straightforward, but it is interesting. Three, two, one, go. Anyways, uh, I hope that kind of uh, opens some of you guys' mind, opens you guys' eyes to like what's happening here. That's part, dude. This fucking okay, game like, runs oh, in 263p, and that's outputted uh, through a fucking OSSC into like, like upscaled to 480p, and then that goes up to. Uh, but it's displayed on a TV as as interlaced uh, the way I'm watching it. And then the way you guys are watching it is double upscaled, both from a fucking upscaler and a capture card. So you guys are seeing a digital progressive scan signal and I'm seeing a fully interlaced signal. So for that reason alone, just by that like the format difference, you'll never have like what, what appears on my stream is never gonna look exactly like how it does. Like if you sat here and looked at the two things, like, like how I do every day, like you would realize right away that like the way these uh, these two screens look is completely different. There's just no way you're gonna make it exactly the same. Just by it's like it's like it's like the difference between ice cream and gelato. You know what I'm saying? It's like you can make gelato taste like ice cream. You can make ice cream taste like gelato, but they're not. They're just fundamentally not the same thing. And so to get one thing to work on another, it, it requires definitely a lot of finagling. Anyways, um, I think you guys get the idea. By the way, all this shit I'm, I was saying is just barely scratching the surface of like all the different types. Some of you guys are mentioning, some of the nerds in my chat are mentioning all different types of TVs and stuff that do actually show interlay signals and whatever. And it just goes so deep and there's so many different types of screens and monitors and TVs that uh, it's just a whole rabbit hole. It's just a whole ass rabbit hole. And yeah, and all the shit I said barely scratches the surface of it. What's up, Dev? Yeah, I'm rocking the upscaled component. P part of the reason why my game looks so good is because I'm upscaling component output to an HD capture card. D I, I know that might not sound like anything special to you guys, but like pretty much any other person you're gonna see playing this game uh, d does not do that because it's expensive and it's a pain in the ass. It takes a lot of trial and error to get a setup like mine working. It took me like many, uh, many, many Amazon returns and failed splitting, you know, splitting signals and different upscalers and different capture cards before I finally landed on the setup I have now. Which if you're curious, you can type exclamation point setup in the chat. Which, and then here's the kicker, is the setup might work good for this game, but for another game, like say a PS2 game that outputs in a different resolution, it might not work as good as something else. So this is just the best setup I found for Spiral 1 specifically. So yeah, it's a whole ass rabbit hole. You're off to work, have a good one, Gwyn. Thanks for hanging out. Not being in control of your mo- What are you talking about? Keep grinding, you grew up with the game? Yeah, dude. I will keep grinding. 
Starting Resident Evil speedruns. Dude, which Resident Evil are you speedrunning, Bethesda? And yeah, good to see you, Dill, by the way. Great to see you. Yeah, a RetroTink 5X would be completely useless with this game because, like, uh, you cannot do 5X. I've tested it. You cannot do 5X interlacing in this game. So you're better off buying a lower tier retro tink for this game specifically. You could still use a 5X, you're just not using it to its full capability. A lot of computer and like tech stuff is like that. It's like you can spend more money on like a fancier piece of equipment that, that would probably still work fine. Like graphics cards are a really good example of this. Like you could buy a fucking a 4090, a, a, like a $2,000 graphics card. But, like, unless you're playing games that explicitly take advantage of ray tracing and, you know, all these other different, like, shading and whatever, um, then there's, then, like, yeah, I mean, your 4090 will work fine for just playing Counter-Strike, but it's, it's unnecessary, it's, it's overkill. And the same thing is true with, uh, upscaler, with the upscaler to game, uh, to output, uh, pairing. That's how you have to pair a graphics card with the games you're going to play. You have to kind of pair the upscaler that you're getting with, with the game you're playing. You're welcome for releasing, you furry. I'm glad to see you. Oh, that's not going to work. I got... Oh, wow. I got so lucky there. You guys saw, like, how the camera jostled a little bit when I did the jump? That actually, I was falling off the ledge. I jumped at the last possible frame. So what happened was I was falling off the ledge and the camera got stuck like on the ledge partially and like did like a little And that's bad because that means I'm losing height a little bit on the jump. I got very lucky not to bonk there. Yeah, I've been using this OSSC for so fucking long, dude. This OSC, uh, OSSC is amazing. I first got it back in like, what, like 2018, 2019? Uh, and it's still running strong, still doing great. And a big, uh, it's also a kind of, it's kind of emotional for me because, uh, here, hold on. I'll explain in a sec. Uh, that's not gonna work. I'm just gonna continue. Um, it's kind of emotional for me because all the way back then, uh, I remember talking about all this stuff, you know, still trying to figure out my you know, how to do component capture correctly for this game, particularly. I remember being like, man, I mean, I just, like, I don't want to spend the $200 it was at the time to get an OSSC, like, I don't know, like, but I feel like I should, like, oh, I don't know. And then I earned, I'll never forget this, fucking Later72, which some of you guys remember that name, um, the fucking just donated $200 to me, like, right there in that moment. And, um... Yeah, and I got the OSSC, and so, and sa and kind of sad story is that uh, later, later, was later presumed, um, actually, uh, you know, this is really sad, he, he passed away. According to what people have shared online, it isn't technically confirmed, but it is widely accepted that later passed away, which is why he has not been around for many years. I forgot to grab a, a dragon there. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's really, it's really kind of powerful for me because all this stuff, all this time, like for me that I'm putting into gaming every day, I fucking go live. I have to turn this fucking box on that is only sitting there because later donated $200 to me one day in like 2018. Like, think about that. Is that shit not heavy as fuck? That shit is so heavy. So yeah, I mean like, damn. You know? Rest in peace. I think about him every time I turn that damn thing on. Three, two, one, go. So yeah, guys, if any of you guys are struggling with depression or anything like that, and okay, rolling. you know, it's, oh, it's been peaceful. like, j just think about that. What, what later did to all of us, like with that, with that, you know, right there. Just think about that. Is that the effect you want to have on someone? That they are, they think like, ah, too bad. Every time they see a memento of you. Think about that. If you're really struggling with depression, you know. You don't want to put that on someone like that.
it's it, it might feel like and this is the honest to god truth it might feel like you're completely alone in this world but if you if you die if you commit suicide you will literally be leaving someone with with a weight you know because they because they loved you more than you even realized you can't you can't avoid it you literally cannot be alone in this world i'm sorry to tell you for <laughs> Like, it, it would be so easy, right, if you could just leave this world and no one would care, you know? And that's probably what it might seem like to a lot of you guys. But that's just not the truth. Just not the truth. So yeah, Nat, so, so I sort of carry, like, the, the weight of his memory, like, every time I turn on this OSSC. Yeah, life is really fucking intense like that. Three, two, one, go. You started a Forex trading copier? If you, I don't know what the fuck that means. That sounds like some stock market shit. If you make it big, you'll donate a bomb. You'll donate a bomb? Like a fucking, like a nuke? I think you mean like a don like a big donation is what you mean. <laughs> Please do not send me any armaments or, you know, explosives. Thank you. <laughs> I, th I think I get what you mean. What's up, Xylus? Dude, thanks for lurking, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring down the vibe. I just had to... Since we were talking about OSSCs and all this sort of stuff and, like, all, all of this shit, like, I, I, felt, I felt it poignant to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, sending you a fucking literal missile from North Korea. You're my favorite streamer. Yeah, if you do want to send me something, send me the salt and vinegar chips, dude. Those things are so good. Love those. It's one of my favorite snacks. One of my favorite beer snacks. Salt and vinnies. And some uh, some nice pickles as well on the side. What's up, Ice Thunder? Oh, dude, I tried all dressed. They taste like... If I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong about this, um, they taste like a mix between barbecue and salt and vinegar. Or like sour cream and onion. They had like some tang. It's like barbecue, but with like some tang to them. Which I wasn't really a fan of, but I get it. People who like barbecue chips, I can see where they fucking love those. Yeah, I mean, they sell them. I mean, I'm just too lazy to buy them, that's all. Do I still play xylophone? So I was playing vibraphone in those videos, which is different. And um, no, <laughs> I don't have a I don't have any mallet instrument here. I live in a part in an apartment on the other side of the country, so it just wasn't something that was reasonable to bring over. But I do have a uh, pink uh, piano, like little cheap Amazon keyboard. That sometimes uh, when I'm stoned and I hear a song I want to maybe try playing, I'll I'll play along to it. Sarah can confirm. I do vibe out musically from time to time. Opinion on classic Pringles? There, it's like Pringles are just cr like cardboardy, you know? They're just not. They're not it. I'm sorry, like to the Pringles fans. I mean, they're definitely unique. I'll give them the the unique factor. They're definitely like when you eat a Pringle, you know you're having a Pringle, you know? Like, I'll give them that. But they're just not my thing. I yeah, I don't mind sun chips. Sun chips are good. They're I mean they're all right. Like usually you'll sun chips are like my your like last resort option, right? It's like you're at a subway or something and all they have is fucking sun chips. It's like, all right, I'll rock the sun chips. And then it's like, oh, this is delightfully better than I was expecting.
Yeah, Pringles just have this weird, like, cardboardy taste to them that I just can't, like, get past. Seabrooks, those were the salt and vinegar chips. Those were good. I mean, dude, like, literally, I, I don't mean to say this in, like... I mean, I'll just say it like it is. Like, pretty much any salt and vinegar kettle chip is is gonna be pretty much the same experience. Like, super fucking crunchy, super fucking sour, like tangy, salty. Like Seabrooks, that's it's like same shit as like the kettle brand is the same shit as whatever other brand. That might offend some of you guys. I know some of you guys have some real brand loyalty with your potato chips, but like when you start talking about kettle cooked chips, like. They're just like super, and I like them, by the way. They're just super fucking crunchy. It doesn't really matter what brand you get, you know? It's like, they're all like pretty much the same product, in, in my opinion. I can't do prawn flavored anything. Dude, fun story. Um, Laura uh, made me get, or I don't know if she sent me, or this was like years ago. She said, she made me uh, get prawn chips on Amazon. I remember I ordered prawn chips on Amazon. Uh, and when they arrived um, in the mail, because we don't have prawn flavored anything in America. That's like a UK thing. So I was like, fine, I'll try the prawn chips. And when they arrived, they were literal like hard plastic discs. And I didn't know that these existed, that you had to like boil, you had to fry them yourself. I didn't know that you could buy like pre, like, I don't know if they're like dehydrated, but they're like, they literally felt like hard, like notebook folder, like plastic. Like, I was like, what the fuck? These are chips. And so I didn't know that. I didn't know you were supposed to fry them. And so I would just take a bite out of it. Imagine taking a bite out of like a plastic notebook that had a slight shrimp flavor to it. Oh my God. That shit was horrible. I nearly cut my mouth doing that. Yeah, they were prawn crackers or whatever. <laughs> so apparently you're supposed to fry them yourself. This should work. And I remember I went on stream later that day. I'll never forget, I went on stream, I was like, dude, I got these like prawn crackers or chips or whatever. And I tried them, they're like hard plastic. Like, what the fuck is that? How do you guys eat that? <laughs> and Laura was like, you have to fry them, you dumb fuck. Everyone in the chat is like, you ate them raw? <laughs> like, what the shit? It doesn't say anywhere on the package or anything that you're supposed to fry them. They're just like, here's your prawn chips. Enjoy. Fucking cheap ass Amazon prawn chips. No, I didn't fry them. <laughs> I gave up. Because, you know, at, we didn't we didn't have like a lot of oil or anything. I don't remember. I would have had to use like all of our olive oil, you know, or something like that. And that was that would have not been smart. So I actually just ended up throwing them away. <laughs> I was like, whatever, dude. I'm not about to go fry these two. Like, fuck this. I was already so emotionally defeated by that point. It's like when Americans don't put water in our squash on taste videos and then swig the double trick. What the fuck are you talking about, Sum 41? What even is any of that? Water in a squash. I feel like you're just talking about something completely separate than what I'm imagining in my head. That's what it feels like. You're talking about adding water to a, to a squash, a fruit. I'm, I'm surely not on the same page as you right now. Dude, and smelly, all the British people get it. Oh, it's, squash is diluting its concentrate. So it's like juice. It's like juice. It's like juice that you're supposed to water down. I see. <laughs> Put water on the squash and then sip on some bleach. 
What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, we have, um, we do have concentrated juices in America, but they come in, like, cans. It, it's, does it, like, come in a can that you, like, keep in, like, the freezer? Is it, like, that type of thing? Because we have those in America. Concentrate, like, juice, like, concentrate juice stuff. I have one of those in my uh, freezer right now of Limeade. Like canned concert. Oh, it's a liquid? Interesting. Yeah, so that is definitely different than any juice product we have in America. You know, we it's funny that you guys talk about really concentrated juice in liquid form. Um, Sarah, you know, has been recently dealing with a UTI and um, she, uh, of course, bought like the the unsweetened cranberry juice. Oh my god, she, she has to fucking dilute that because it is so intensely sour and tart. I highly recommend it for mixed drinks in case you guys have never tried it before. To any vodka cranberry fans in the chat, use unsweetened cranberry juice. Just trust me. It might sound bad because it's like you'd think sugar would cup. No. Unsweetened cranberry juice will literally blow your dick off. It's fucking dope. Your normal cranberry juice is unsweetened, dude. In America, all we have is like cranberry. You have to look so hard to find an unsweetened cranberry juice. You have to look in like the the fancy version of the juice aisle, you know what I mean? Where they have like juice and then they have, here's the fancy juice and that's where you find it. It's not even like with all the other cranberry juice. And, and I was fucking anno like annoyed by this because it's unsweetened cranberry juice. It's not the same thing as 100% cranberry juice. Even though it should be called that. Forget about like cranberry juice cocktail or any of that stuff that is sugar. Yeah, everything in the US is just uh, like by default, you're getting like the most sweetened like corn syrup version of some shit, you know? You have to like really go out of your way to find like the correct like unsweetened version of a product. And I want to reiterate, it's called the unsweetened, but it it's very, very like... It doesn't taste like it's unsweetened. I'll put it that way. It tastes like it's like the most sour. Instead of calling it unsweetened, they should call it like super sour version is what they should call it. You'd think like unsweet would be like, oh, more mild, you know, less. No, <laughs> it's like, holy shit. American bread is be Well, here's the thing with bread is like, even for me, like I don't buy bread in the bread aisle. Um, because that has all the fucking, like, uh, stabilizers and shit. It just isn't real bread, you know? Um, I buy all my bread from the bakery section of the- which every grocery store in America is gonna have, like, a bakery section separate from the- from, from the bread aisle. So you can get real bread in America. People- people kind of have the misconception that Americans don't eat real bread. Which, sadly, you know, many don't. But you can easily get real bread at a- at a supermarket. Do we have tiger bread? Yeah, that's like the the whole wheat uh, stuff, right? That stuff's all right. That's like one of the the better breads you can get from the uh, better for you breads, I should say, from the uh, bread aisle. You bake your own dog shit bread, dude. I respect that. Bread is one of those things. If you make it yourself, you're a fucking G for that. Yeah, sourdough is the best. I buy two, like, big, like, sourdough rolls. Uh, they're, like, called, like, French rolls. I buy two big uh, rolls for, uh, you know, un unsliced for, like, four bucks from Kroger. It's a good deal. And they last a good while. I'll put, like, one... I'll put one of the baguettes in my, um... They're not, like, baguettes. They're, like, like wider than a baguette. I'll put one in the freezer, and then just the other one I leave out. And that shit... That shit's pretty good. Bumper nickel fans. Uh, not me personally. I feel like I would go before I went for like rye or wheat. I feel like I'd go for 
Or, or pardon me, I would go for rye before I went for pumpernickel, unless those are the same thing. I feel like those are very similar. I don't know, I'm not a bread maker, so I have no fucking idea. They're both just very brown. <laughs> That's all I can say. Oh, is that what those are? Those are those little um, little mini bread chips and Chex Mix. Those are pumpernickel. I didn't know that. Those are good. Oh man. Oh man. Hold on. Okay. I'm alive. Oh Jesus. This is not good. That was big time loss. I could have saved time here too. I could have gotten into the green, but alas. I'm definitely not playing as hot as I was, like just as in this, I'm not in the zone yet. You know, maybe I'll get in the zone the more I play today, but right now I'm not like locked in at all. Which is fine. Just, uh, it's an observation. It's a, pumper is a notch more sa sad than standard rye bread. I like that rye bread has like a bit of a, I don't want to say sour taste to it, but it like, it really complements a, um, what is it? Like pastrami and like uh, roast beef and stuff like that. I, I don't normally make pastrami sandwiches, so it's just like, I don't feel the need for it, but I might fuck around and fuck with it. Great with just butter. Butter. Dude, I had some uh, fucking white burger buns with butter last night <laughs> with a beer. Not like as my dinner, but like, you know, the midnight snack. We had like some leftover burger buns that surely were going to go bad if no one ate this. I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to, I didn't even toast them. I just like ate them with butter. I was like, this is good. This is fine. Have like a pickle and drink a beer. Like that works for me. <laughs> yeah, pastrami is good. You know what, Siona? Like, I think you're right because um, when I'm not playing as hard, you know, as optimal or as like pushing the movement as hard, I just tend to get more gems that way, like playing safer. Which is, I think that's part of the reason, not to not to drag Ash through this or anything, but I think that's part of the reason why like why Ash has been able to get such good runs um, without necessarily pushing like the movement necessarily as crazy, like just by being playing chill, you know. Not that they're not playing well or anything. It's just that, uh, you know, there's like a real difference in like, um, in like really like every movement being like coked out of your mind, you know, versus just trying to play solid and chill. And you know, you're definitely gonna get more gems uh, doing the latter approach, and thus, you know, your runs are gonna be generally more solid as a result of that. It just makes sense. It's a, it's a positive feedback loop, so to speak. You enjoy having a beer and eating random snacks. Yeah, I mean, shit. Reach into the choir here. I love that shit. A good pumper in your eyes feels like processing finishes at the... Hold on. Man, we got a, we got a baker in the chat. Oh, shit. I kind of want to reset, but I'm just going to continue for now. I'm going to vibe out. Um, it feels like it's processing finishes to press rye grain together, just a brown brick of compressed rye. Is that really? So, so pumpernickel and rye bread are pretty similar products, right? Like, I get it that they're not the same, just pumper is like a more compressed rye. Is that what you're saying? Again, I'm like, I, I have no, I know nothing about bread making, so. You like eating beer? <laughs> Yum. Beer with pita chips. Ooh, pita chips and some hummus. Fuck yeah, dude, I keep forgetting to hit that guy. I've been eating a lot of just like uh, raw baby carrots with um, with like this delicious like creamy dill spread from the store. It's a nice snack as well. Low carb, I guess. Oop. Not like I'm trying to not eat carbs or anything. I fucking love carbs. Eating babies? Well, who's talking about eating babies? 
Are they good? <laughs> Is that a good beer snack? What, what are you guys saying? Babies? <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm not gonna knock until I try it. <laughs> so, man, I, I got an open mind. Jordan, thank you for the sub, man, with the one month, the ooh-woo. To cap it off, thank you so much for that. It smells like... It smells like penis in here. I know it's not me. I have a clean penis, I'll have you know. I bet I eat lots of, uh, strawberry. Yeah. Oh, you mean like I eat her, I eat her ass? Is that what you mean? Yeah. <laughs> no. We don't engage in that type of behavior too much. She does, ha dude. She has a fucking UTI right now, so like, you know, I'm not really, I'm not eating any of that right now. Just, just, just for cleanliness purpose, just for healing reasons for her. I don't know if there's any other penises in this room right now. That's what I'm saying. Like, I I refuse to believe that this smell that I'm smelling is coming from my penis. But it does smell like a dirty penis. Could it be Cheddar? Is Cheddar the penis boy? You did, did you leave your penis in my room, Jack? Uncleaned? Unkempt? Disgusting. The least you could have done was clean it before leaving it all over the place. Ball sweat. No, I'm, I don't have like a sweaty ass or anything right now. Like this is, a, this is the bitter reality that you guys don't want to accept is having a hairy ass means your ass doesn't get as sweaty as, as bad. You don't get uh, what's called mud butt. <laughs> I know this is like really gross stuff, but like you guys might think, oh, hairy ass, gross. But no, the, the hair actually like stops the sweatiness from being a problem. It adds a very necessary friction so that sweat doesn't like get all gross and stuff. So if you ever see a guy with a hairy ass, you can be rest assured that his ass isn't too sweaty on, at any given moment. But if you see someone with a perfectly clean shaven like waxed butthole, you can bet that they get swamp ass like crazy. It's funny because you'd think it would be the other way around, but it's one of those things where just nature just works better like that, you know? Yeah, if you have a fully shaved ass, you have to go and just like periodically like wipe your ass sometimes. Like that's fucking terrible. I I would I would never. Yeah, you do have to wipe, but I will say having a lot of ass hair, uh, you know, you do have to wipe a little bit more, but it's not like that bad. It's not like, I think the benefits outweigh the drawbacks in that sense. Yeah, got some bidet users. Dude, okay, so I used a bidet for the first time when I was in Japan a few months ago. And bro, let me tell you, I was so scared. I was so scared. I was sitting in the hotel, I was by myself, in the hotel room, all the other dudes were out, and I was sitting on the damn toilet, and I was like, all right, like, this is gonna be my one chance to use, like, an advanced futuristic, you know, bidet. Not just, like, the shitty, like, Amazon, like, attachment, you know, but, like, the proper, like, full, like, future toilet. Like, I can't go to, I can't take a, this is, like, how I thought about it. I can't fly all the way across the world to Japan and not use a bidet. I feel like I have to, like, it's part of the itinerary. You have to do it, you know, as an American. You have to do it, if, especially if you're not already a bidet user. Like, you got to try it when, in Japan. That's one of those things you have to try. You try sushi, you try, you know, uh, yakitori, you, you know, and you try the bidets, you know? So I definitely was, I was psyching myself out. I was pressure, I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to just 
But I was, I swear to God, I was sitting there for like, on the toilet for a good like 15 minutes. Like just racking, it, it felt like an hour. I was like racking my brain. I was like, dude, I'm not ready for this water to shoot like right on my asshole. Like, I don't know how hard it's gonna shoot. I don't know, like, you know, I have a very sensitive butthole. It's like, it's gonna be ticklish. Oh God, I didn't, dude, what the fuck? I would, oh no, this is really bad. My run's kind of dead right now. Um, and yeah, dude, I finally gathered, and by the way, a side note is there, because it was such an advanced toilet, there was like 10 different buttons on it that I had no idea what, what they meant. It wasn't just like bidet button. It was like, there's like a warming button and a bidet button and a, this button is, you know, and like they just had like different little symbols on them that I didn't understand, you know? Yeah, so I just, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna try this one. And dude, I swear to God, when it made the noise, I heard the noise of like the little nozzle like uh, retracting. It was, it went like, like as the nozzle, you know, appeared under my asshole. It went like, and I was like, oh God. I was like, so my heart was beating a million miles and I was like, oh God, here it goes. And then went like, and like if fucking right when that cold water made contact with my asshole, I jumped off the toilet seat. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I fucking launched. It was like a rocket launching off the. I launched off the toilet seat physically. It was like I was sitting on the ground after. My, uh, by the way, my uh, you know I I cleaned up everything. It wasn't that. It wasn't that like it wasn't like a mess or anything. It was just like holy fuck, dude. I I was like I could I couldn't handle it. I it caught me by such surprise that it made me launch off the toilet and onto the ground. Yeah, the, but dude, I swear to God, it was like foreplay. Cause like the fucking, you know, it's like, do I press the button? Is this the right button? I don't know. Let's see what this button does. And then you fucking, you hear like, Ear. it's like, oh, here we go. It's like, literally these shits are like, it's like, it's fucking like trying to edge you or something, you know? Oh my God, dude. So I can at least attest that I tried a bidet. I tried one. I'm sure if I were to keep trying and like get used to it, like it'd be fine. I just like, it's when you're dealing with the bidet you're not used to, especially, I think that was my thing that I was scared about. It's like, I didn't know what was gonna happen, you know? Like if I'd have just tried it like a few more times and then like, you know, gathered up the strength, but even still, dude, I am such a ticklish asshole, you know, like, that's the only reason I, it's not that I have anything against like water on my ass or anything. It's just, uh, it's just that I'm just very squeamish. Like, I don't know, have any other way to put it. Like if I really, uh oh, oh my God, I'm alive. If I really need to, I'll like put some like, you know, water, I'll put like, I'll, 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 I'll take a piece of toilet paper and like run it under the sink for a second and use that if I really need like moisture on my asshole, but you know, like forget the, oh God, forget the whole bidet thing, dude. Forget that for me. I, I could get used to it. If I felt, like I said, if I forced myself, I could get used to it and I would probably convert to being a bidet user if I forced myself. But you really got to get past that initial, like, you know, if you're like me and you haven't used a bidet your whole life, you know, you really got to get past that initial, like, fear. I, I don't know how else to put it. It's just like fear. But yeah, I hope you guys are proud of me because I did, I did get over it and I did fucking... I did press the button and shoot my asshole. I did it. You know, you can't tell me I didn't try. It'd be honestly, Mixton, it'd be nice if the fucking toilet was like, okay, water deploying in three, two, one. That actually would have helped with my fear, unironically. I lost a lot of time. I'm going to try to finish this run. Okay, here comes all the fucking bidet fanatics in the chat. Like, okay, I get it. They're good. We get it. You like shooting water on your asshole. We get it. You can't shit in the wild. You can't just wipe your ass normally anymore. I fucked this up. It's okay. Though. Damn it. 
you ran past. I'm fucked there. What's with taking damage in Beastmakers in the swamp water? It gives you invincibility, so that way you can charge into both both of the fire bo uh, works boxes there without taking uh, more than one hit of damage. And also, uh, you know, the side effect of that is you don't... Um, because you have that invincibility, it's easier to sideswipe the first firework box without getting the knockback animation as well. So it just it just makes the fireworks boxes go faster because of invincibility from the swamp water. From the swamp ass. Where is he? Dog, what? Did he despawn? Where the fuck is he? Oh there he is. I'm sorry, I just I missed him, I guess. Am I talking about shit in the sink? No, I'm not talking about shitting in the sink. Dude, what? I didn't grab it? Did it despawn? Like, what happened? Oh, damn it. it might have despawned. That's like a thing that can happen sometimes. If you play like shit like me. I might have also just missed it. You use squirrels to wipe in the wood. You're a true, a true outdoorsman. It's a no reset day. I mean, right now I'm no resetting, but I have been resetting today. Don't tell me what kind of day it is. <laughs> I'll tell you what day it is. I might get a fucking world record today if you keep if you keep fucking around. All right, just not on this run. But yeah, no. Yesterday I was like going really hard on runs, so today I need to like be willing to no reset a run like this. Like it's just genuinely required for my mental health to stay intact. Sorry, pace pals. Bunch of bitches. Shut up. Who are you telling to shut up? Shut these nuts up. Now everyone's telling me to shut up. Time Traveler, did you read my fucking essay in the Discord about, about how to optimally buy a lot of ice cream at once? <laughs> Time Traveler went to an ice cream store and asked to buy the entire three gallon bucket that I'm sure that they had like on the display there, like with that they scoop out of. You were just asked to buy one of those. I'm like, bro, you can't do that. You have to like ask for a manager. You have to be like, hey, you know, I'm interested in buying a lot of ice cream at once from you guys. You know, make a, you know, decide the flavor, figure out a day, figure out the amount. You can't just fucking ask like a random college kid behind a fucking ice cream counter. Oh, can I just take the whole thing home with me? Like, of course she said no, dude. It was worth a shot. Well, I'm just saying, like, you you, you didn't even shoot your shot correctly, is what I'm saying. You, had to ask, you should have asked for the manager. If you really wanted to do that. By the way, that would have been a colossal waste of money. I know you would. I know you, Time Traveler. I know you are not about to spend, like, the probably, like, $300 that they would charge for one of those. Like, you definitely would, even if everything went well and they were like, okay, we'll let you buy one, like, $230, you'd be like, oh, uh, I'm just going to go to the grocery store and get three one-gallon things for, like, for, like, 40 bucks or something. Guaranteed that's what you would have done anyways. I already, I know you.
strawberry cheesecake flavor is bussin'. Dude, I respect it. I mean, dude, like, Sarah is a big ice cream connoisseur. So we've, we end up going to, like, the little bougie ice cream shop by our house, like, a lot. And yeah, I always, I, I, I act like I'm not a huge ice cream person, but then I'll always be, like, fucking taking bites of hers and shit. I'm definitely a mooch like that. My favorite ice cream flavor that I had was uh, was a banana pudding ice cream that had like Nilla wafers in it. Oh my god! And here's the fucking kicker: is they sell a fucking but I I learned this after eating this ice cream. They sell a banana pudding um uh milkshake or pardon me vanilla is it, is it vanilla pudding or banana pudding? I always forget. No, it's vanilla pudding I believe because it has uh it has Nilla wafers instead of uh not bananas. You have to get the vanilla pudding um, milkshake from uh, from Cookout to anybody who lives in the South. That's the fucking that shit's busting. It literally tasted exactly like the fucking ice cream from the fancy ice cream place that was like six dollars for like a fucking scoop versus like three dollars for like a giant ass milkshake, which is basically just ice cream. Yeah, pudding is a loose term in America. It's just something, some sweet thing that you can eat with a spoon, basically. I mean, you might as well, I might as well call ice cream pudding, for that matter. Dude, I am so under gemmed, it's ridiculous. That's what I get for not paying any attention. I mean, to be fair, I'm, like, I got fucked out of the, uh... The chest. In, uh, treetops. Yeah, I'll grab some of these. <laughs> this is just like a joke right now. Dude, the clown proxy is... We call it Flora Flop. It, it is actually so stupid that I go for that on runs. <laughs> like, I really should not go... If I'm on a really good pace, I might not go for it in the future. Because it's, it's just really stupid. It's cool when you get it, but it's just not worth the risk. Like, you're usually gonna miss it. And it only saves, like... Like what, like three seconds? Three, four seconds? I mean, it's definitely not negligible. It's just, um, it's just the risk reward is really bad. Yeah, these splits got it, by the way. These splits got that clown. That's kind of why I'm like, all right, well, now I'm locked into going for it, like, to keep up with the splits. But again, I'd only be losing, like, a, maybe like two or, t compared to these splits, I think I'd only be losing, like, two seconds if I didn't go for it. Versus losing, like, like five to six seconds if I go for it and miss it. So it all depends obviously on the rest of the movement in the home world as well. <clears throat> Wait, how many uh 992? I need to grab this. Actually no I didn't. I just needed the three reds and the, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> Math not mathing. The classic chill run, just zero math. I'm the king of doing any percent and like having, like just not paying attention to the gem count the whole time. <laughs> yeah, math skip. Right, let's see if we can get this. Since it's a bad run, it probably will be first try. There you go. What did I tell you? <laughs> classic. The fucking classic. I'm also the king of that. I'm the king of getting a first try on bad runs. Yeah, every time. Dude, that's not, that's definitely not the first time that that's happened to me. On all of my good runs, my rats, like, take so many tries, and then on all the bad runs, they're always, like, first, second try, you know? That's just the nature of it. Compared to the other two, you uphold insane consistency while hard out reading chat. It's impressive. Thanks. I mean, compared to the other two Spyro games, I think you're gonna do a good enough job reading chat on those games as well. You get a good amount of um, downtime in a, in any given Spyro run to read chat. The game has like built-in like look at chat moments, whether it's grabbing a dragon or grabbing an egg or grabbing an orb, talking to an NPC. 
I'm gonna do a, uh, I'm not gonna flame him, I'm gonna do a credit skip. Actually, I'll just flame him, just cause I wanna take like a little breather. Give, give me the 38, fuck it. Ah, oh, yeah. Sorry, Ash and Laura so are locked in. They talk to chat too. They talk to chat. And sometimes I'm locked in and I don't fucking pay attention Nork. to chat either. Nasty Nork. Yesterday I was super Spurs. locked in. So now there's I was still talking again to chat. in the Dragon Kingdom? Well, but I think they're good about it. I Most Spyro players thing. are good about reading chat. Because like I said, it's the game is like gives you chat way. breaks to like look at chat and stuff. Have I ever played Baldi's Basics? I mean, I I remember at a at like a speedrun marathon I went to a way while back. Um, Zem was speedrunning Baldi's Basics, and uh, that was pretty ass. Like, cause that game's like all RNG to speedrun, basically. I think. And yeah, he'd get fucked up by Baldi a lot. I remember. Those were the days. I've never played it myself. What's world record? It's a 37.19. 37.19. That was like a minute and some change going into nasty. And got a first try rat. All right. Did I say 23.19? I meant to say 37.19. Um, I'm going to go pee real quick. I will be right back. And then we'll do another run. Did I try any Persona Spyro 2? Uh, no. 3, 2, 1, go. You gotta remember, anytime you bring up any percent on Spyro 2, that I... The first part of a 100% run is an any percent run. Just with some extra steps, you know, They're grabbing going. a few extra gems and oh, glimmer and whatnot. It's been peaceful. So you're, you know, keep that, keep that in mind. You're not missing much by me grinding 100% in Spyro 2. Oops, I, uh, I'm just gonna keep playing. Forgot to press the right button. There. Uh, I'm gonna try to lock in a little bit here. I'll give myself some resets to try to get like a good pace out of Mama here. We'll see how many um, I feel like doing before my next no reset. But for now, we're we're gonna we're gonna try to lock in. Thanks for the good luck, Dragon Blood. Blood, blood, blood. <laughs> you guys know that video? The kid is like blood. What's up, Chef Brock? Yo, Matt. Do I think you could... Oh. 
I think I could tell your boss to lick your nutsack. I feel like this is just a made up situation. Right now. I'm not gonna answer that. I try to get Sarah to tell her boss to lick her nutsack all the time. I get it. I mean, the, the pressure of the of being in a power dynamic at work, you know, between you and your boss, it could really limit you from uh, putting your foot down. I get it. Where am I from? I'm from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Check my speedrun.com profile. Yeah, Sarah has a nutsack. You're pretty pissed off with your boss. Are you really? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, I don't have a boss. You know, obviously I would say like, you know, try to try to communicate with him and or, or to go to HR or whatever. But you know, it's not it's not not always that simple as I've learned with Sarah, so all I can say is good luck. No, Yuki, actually, Ash did exactly what you're saying. Ash tied Laura's world record, actually down to the frame. But even if even if uh, they'd have done it within a second, uh, it would still can be considered a tie for first place. Just because Laura, just because one of them gets it first or whatever, doesn't mean that they get first and the uh, and the second person gets second or whatever. It's a tie for first. Furthermore, if, for example, if, for example, one person gets like a, a 37.19.1, and a person gets a 37.19.9, that's still considered a tie, because um, in this particular game, we time, uh, we round down um, to the whole second. We don't consider uh, milliseconds in our time. In, in the leaderboard place, in the actual frame count we do, but like in the actual, in the leaderboard placement we don't. And if any of you guys are about to ask why, it's just because that's how it's always been, and it would be too uh, too difficult to to switch at this point. But yeah, funny enough, um, yeah, Ash did tie uh, Laura's run to the frame, which is just a funny coincidence. Even though they didn't need to, they still did. They didn't need to in order for it to count as a tie. High world record. So on the leaderboard it says first place, then first place, and then and then I'm third place, you know. That's how it works. Oops. I could switch for a time. Well, no, it's not easy to switch because if you switch like for one time on the leaderboard, you have to switch it for every day. You have to retime every run if you want to add milliseconds. You can't just have some speedruns try to do that. Some speedruns will like show milliseconds only for the top times. So, I mean, every speed game is different like that, but it would definitely look a little weird. I mean, I, I don't think that's something that would happen. Unless it really came down to, like, like records that were, like... Like, some categories use milliseconds. Especially really short ones or ones that are, like, misc categories. But for pretty much all the main categories in Spyro, uh, they don't. And it's just because that's just how it's always been, and it would be too much trouble to retime every run, and or it would look too shitty, or it'd be like organizationally awkward to only do it for some runs and not others. Also, I'm not a leaderboard mod. Big disclaimer. So what I'm take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. This is just what I'm assuming. I am making assumptions right now. What are the most important spots to save time? On these splits, um, big time saves are going to be in Misty Bog, uh, Blowhard, uh, Jock has some time saved, depending on my gem count. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Oh, and uh, Beastmaker's Homeworld, right before the Balloonists. Four seconds there as well. Each of those time possible time saves is f anywhere between four and eight seconds. Making for a total of like, I don't know, we'll, we'll just like guesstimate it to like maybe like a total of 20 seconds to save throughout the run. And 
I'm just guesstimating there. That's not like, that's not meant to be an exact number or anything. Xylexis, thank you for the uh, prime. Uh, Laura has a world record right now. Lumi Laura. If you guys are curious about like uh, leaderboards and stuff like that, the leaderboard is on speedrun.com slash spiral one. And to those of you who are curious about speedrunning yourselves, make sure that you go there and check like the rule set and like the allowed emulators and all that. So all that information is there. When timing starts and stops, things like that. Sub 37 incoming. I mean, like, look, if you really, like, sat here and, like, was like, all right, Deo's best split for every level, we look at every single gold and blah, 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 like, then and we take away all the time save and we get, we say a theoretically perfect run. It could be a 36, but you could probably say that. But, uh, you know, practically speaking, that's, I don't think that's realistic for me. What's realistic for me is to go for, like, a 37 1X. And then maybe push that to a 37-0x. That's where I'm at in the game right now, is to push in that, in, into that. That's like, that's like, those are good, like, goals. Those are realistic goals. The tasks for any person, it's like, I don't even know. It's like 32 minutes or it's like many minutes faster. But you got to remember the task is doing strategies that, that real people aren't, you know? <clears throat> yeah, that's true. The world record text can be updated to include Ash there. That's true. Uh, Bex wants to help with that. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you first. Thank you for believing in me. Will nicotine make you fail a drug test? No, it won't. I mean, nicotine's legal in America. I don't know if you're like in some other part of the world, but most parts of the world, nicotine is legal. Unless you're applying to be like a drug counselor. And even then, you know, it's a funny thing about uh, people who are in like rehab and stuff like that is a lot of them still smoke cigarettes and stuff and drink like soda and like, you know, it's usually a, a big part of like the recovery process for addicts is replacing one addiction with another. So if smoking cigarettes is better for you than smoking meth, then hey, I mean, that's that's your path to a, to a better lifestyle. I mean, like, I don't judge that. Not that you asked anything about that, just just a thought. Honestly, for a lot of places, even if they drug test, you don't even have to worry if you smoke weed. Unless it's like a heavy machinery or like operating vehicles type of job. I don't, you know, or it's like a government job or something like really like high security or whatever. You don't have to worry about like weed showing up on the drug test for like a grocery store or something, you know. As long as you don't go the interview high, you know, you'll be fine. Yeah, Ash tied world record. Uh, this was like th like three or four days ago. Or no, two days ago. I don't know, something like that. I have no sense of time. I'm a live streamer. The hours meld together. When you don't have anywhere to be, you don't have any sense of time. That's like kind of a funny thing. You only really ever think about the time when you have somewhere to be or, you know, some waiting for your shift to end or whatever it may be.
You scoured Google and it made you sick to your stuff. What are you talking about? Do I even want to ask? I feel like I don't even want to ask. Oh, you're talking about just... Oh, hold on. It's a different person. Never mind. I misread. I misread. You've been waiting for your shift to end. Hell yeah. You had THC tests show up even though you have customer... Yeah, customer service, like, you can... Like, obviously, they, they... You know, you'll get fired if you're stoned at work, you know? I remember when I used to work at Guitar Center, I was stoned at work once, and my fucking, uh... My manager, like, called me into the office and was like, Dude, like, we know you're stoned or whatever, like, just... Just stop, or else we will have to fire you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> So usually it's like it's like that, you know. Obviously, depending on the line of work you're in, it could be more serious than others. But yeah, if it's just some like basic like entry level grunt kind of job, like especially if you're not like like I said, operating heavy machinery or anything, then uh, you know, drug tests. You don't have to worry about a drug test. They don't give a fuck. I don't know where you pronounce nasty, uh, not like G nasty. G nasty is the rapper name. It's in banking. Are you talking about like you're you're concerned about a drug test for the job you're going to? In banking? I mean, I don't know. Dude, like, I don't know. You've already Googled it a bunch. Like, the best you can do, like, is just not do any drugs leading up to the interview. And if you have, like, trace amounts of, like, fucking, you know, THC in your system, you know, from, like, smoking, like, a month ago, like, whatever, dude. Like, you'll be fine. Like, what are you going to do at this point? Like, you might as well just stop, like, take advantage of this moment. This is, like, how I look at job interviews. It's, like, if you're not sure whether they're going to hire you or not because you have weed in your system or you have whatever drugs in your system, this is a good opportunity for you to just not do drugs leading up to a, an interview you know have happening. It's like, it's just a good test and, you know, think of it like a, like a tolerance break, you know, or, or sobriety check. It's like, hey, you know, I don't want to put this pressure on myself. Like, let's just fucking see if I can be sober for like the week or a couple weeks. And even if I still fail the drug test because THC like lasts in your system for a month, even if I still fail that, at least I did everything I could, you know? It's like, that's really all you can do at that point. Yeah, I know. Like, if the, if a job is going to give you shit for having weed in your system from, like, a month ago, it's like, is that really the, the job you want to work at? Like, that's a good point, <laughs> you know? Like, just because the money is good doesn't mean that they can treat you like dog shit, you know? So just do your thing, man. You'll be fine. If, if it's just nicotine, I don't know what you're worried about. Like, nicotine is legal. I've never heard of anyone failing a drug test for having nicotine in their system. Like, you're totally overreacting if it's just nicotine. In my humble opinion. <laughs> you think people in banking don't smoke cigarettes? Like, what? What's up, Tobias? Ugh. Sparksless? This is bad. Hold on, there is a Sparks at the top of this place here, but I am losing time. Yeah, missing the cycle here. That's really annoying. I made you feel better. Dude, look, I'm not a fucking expert, all right? You just need, you need a fucking chill is what you need to do. So yeah, you're welcome or whatever. But uh, look, I'm not your dad. 
Don't go coming to me for like that t that that type of shit. But you're welcome. <laughs> I'm your daddy. Yeah, whatever. What's up, Tobias? Oh, did I already say what's up to you? I think I did. What up again? Definitely losing some time here. That was pretty ugly. You have an interview tomorrow morning? Do you think I'll get busted for you? Yeah, I know, right? Like, what are we fucking talking about here? I'm over here getting distracted about the fucking most nothing burgers of concerns from you guys. Guys, I drank water before my interview. Do you think they're going to bust me for that? What the fuck was that? Oh, this run's so dead. What the fuck? I've never gotten fucked from that corner like that before. Jesus. That was cool. Should I no reset? I don't, I don't know. I'm going to keep... I feel like I should reset, but I'm just going to keep going for right now. I'm going to be like 15 seconds behind, though. If I have a good level here. It's crazy. That was so dumb. Once yesterday as well. I don't know what causes the tall jump there. Whatever, at least it gave me a reason to reset. <clears throat> Thanks for the uh, good luck, Tyler. Do you think you'll get busted for losing your last Valorant game before an interview? <laughs> yeah. If you're a league player, they should probably test for that. Probably drug test you for being a bitch. What's up, Eric? Oh, it's been peaceful. How am I? I'm alright. What about you, dude? Lay it on me. We all want to know. The supercharge is always so sick. Thank you. That is actually a pretty fun supercharge when it doesn't fuck you like that. It's rare that it fucks you like that in Wizard Peak. Like, that's why it's like kind of like, why does that big jump happen? I don't understand. <laughs> it's been peace. Fucking nerd. Nerd emoji. You're okay? Dude, thank you for sharing. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good today. I'm definitely feeling a little, a lot more chill than yesterday. Yesterday I was trying to be Mr. Hardcore Reset all day, and so by the time I got to the end of like my five hour grind or whatever, I was just so burnt. I definitely took it like an extra hour than I really should have, and I was just so burnt out by the end. So today I'm hoping not to be sober. I've actually just been chilling. When it, when you have a chill mindset like this and you're kind of really pushing out more no resetty type things. Like I'm still willing to reset, but like, you know, I'm sprinkling in the no reset type energy. Um, time flies a lot more. Like I've, we're almost at the three hour mark. Like I, I'm hopeful we can get a, at least a four hour grind into the... been peaceful here in the five worlds or is it six we now have 12 isn't it crazy that he like alludes to the fact that the game has a 120 percent ending in the intro we now have 12,000 treasure which is a hundred percent or is it 14 which is the extra 2,000 in nasty's loot did, did any of you guys ever make that connection it took me like years before i made that connection in my head <laughs> he alludes to the bonus level at the end in the in the intro.
What's up, K of Chaos? Thank you for the good luck. Yeah, I definitely will, Dad Killer. I'm glad you said that. You know, I definitely am looking forward to a fun weekend. Sarah and I, to those of you guys who don't know, Sarah and I are going to be driving up to DC this Friday. Three, two, one, go. And we have a couple of missions. Where our first mission is to buy a bunch of weed, not like a crazy amount, but to buy like some weed. Um, to uh, because it's because you can't buy it here in Virginia. You have to go oh, to Maryland. Um, buy weed. Uh, order a pizza and stay at a hotel. And then the next day, uh, eat a free breakfast and then take the train to the Capitol and smoke weed with Abraham Lincoln. No, just kidding. We're going to not we're going to not bring weed to the Capitol. And uh, we're going to go to a Japanese festival called uh, Sakura Matsuri, um, which is a fun little like outdoor Japanese, like sort of, you know, Japanese culture festival. They got all the like the booths with like different, you know, they got like yakitori and fucking anime girl costume contests and stuff like that. It's just a cute little festival type thing. And then after that, we're going to go have conveyor belt sushi with uh, Rico. And then uh, we're going to drive home. So it'll be a really fun little weekend. Little weekend getaway. Japanese festival, yeah. <laughs> Sarah was joking with me, Dill, about... um. About I should bring my uh I still have my uh, my train card you know the Nismo whatever it's called with all the fucking Sanrio characters on it the train pass it's like one of the little mo mementos I kept yeah the Passmo that's what it is I'm like I'm gonna bring that just to prove my street cred you know <laughs> I'm actually gonna be wearing a shirt that says I love hentai in big letters and then if my my plan at the festival is to go straight to the beer cart and just hang out and just like chill and just talk to people <laughs> can we see the kawaii anime girl costume well, i mean I'm, that that is my costume i love hentai I made sure to get a shirt that had that written in the largest letters possible. Just completely just fucking degen. You're back for a little how the run's been going? They've been alright. I don't speak Japanese, so don't- <laughs> Please don't talk in- Please don't use any other language than English in my chat, thank you. I'm not a real weeb, I'm a fake. Decent enough recovery. No, I'm definitely not gonna be one of those people that's blasting music out of like a backpack or something. I'm not that guy. Yeah, I'm just playing the Spyro, th the title screen music, giving myself PTSD, just blasting that on a Bluetooth speaker. By the way, Trob, since I see you here, um, I, saw, I was on Twitter yesterday and um, I noticed that uh, Tet posted a screenshot of the leaderboards for Crash 1, 100%, from five years ago to today. And uh, I saw Trob's name there. Trob was there. Trob was on that screenshot. So yeah, respect. Yeah, at Ash tied world record uh, in this category to the frame, which is very a pretty pretty fun coincidence. It would still be a tie even if it wasn't a frame perfect tie, but it's still a, still a cool coincidence. And that was like two or three days ago. Thank you, Pat. 
that block. Spiral one sexy tier list. Dude, you know what? You just reminded me. We actually did do that. We did a smasher pass tier list with my uh, tier three subs um, in the call. And we just like went through every Spyro character basically within reason. And uh, yeah, that's, I need to make that. I still need to make that go live on my Patreon. Just keep forgetting to. So yeah, if you want to see that, join my Patreon. Come on, man. I had that. Yeah, the re the record every uh, time that's submitted to the Spyro leaderboards are for main categories. They're rounded down to the whole second. We don't count uh, tenths or hundredths of seconds. Three, two, one, go. So even if you get like a fucking 37, 18 point nine. That is, uh, oh, it's the easy. same as just getting a 37.18.1. It's a 30, they're both 37.18. Well, yeah, I mean, that's like what Ash was timing yesterday at Ocean. Like, did Ash actually, like, really beat the record or not? Or, you know, that that's why they frame-timed it. And it turns out that, no, it, it, it's an actual frame tie. Which is pretty epic. Yes, fish paste. Dude, how many times do, I'm, I don't mean to be mean, but I've like explained this concept like a lot already. Do I need to explain it anymore? <laughs> yes, fish paste. Tartar sauce. Fish paste. <laughs> you're, make me, you're about to make me exclaim, but yeah, particles. Making me mad. You don't have a speedrunning arch nemesis, but if you did, it would be me. How would I be your arch nemesis? What would I ever do to you? Just because I just because I say I want to fuck your mom doesn't mean it's it's anything personal. It's like a big ass. What? Well, so now I, I fuck your mom, and now we're enemies, huh? Sensitive. <laughs> All these fucking SpongeBob quotes in the chat. Isn't that wild that a fucking panty raid episode like was was aired? Like, like the whole plot of that episode revolved around like sneaking in and like fucking stealing panties. Like that's like so that's like awful shit to teach kids. Like I didn't even under I didn't even know that the concept of a panty raid existed until uh, SpongeBob. Like, I've never heard. I've never heard of anyone. By the way, I've never heard of anyone even doing that since. Yeah, I don't even know if that's even a real thing. Pantyrade. I just break and enter and steal somebody's clothes or something. That makes sense. There's definitely no sexual implication behind any of that. What's up, Skunk Fairy? Thank you for the sub. Yeah. 
I think they did eventually take that episode off the air, though, the Panty Raid episode. It's unfortunate because I believe that episode, like, explored a lot of uh, Mr. Krabs' relationship to Mrs. Puff, which I always thought was pretty wholesome. Wasn't that the same episode where, where Mr. Krabs was, like, trying to go on a date with Mrs. Puff? And, or maybe that's a different episode. I don't know. And he, like, he couldn't talk to her. Mr. Krabs' social anxiety. That is a different episode? Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Oh, it was about, yeah, it was about Mr. Krabs feeling old. That's what it was. Yeah, correct. The Panty Raid episode. Oh, yeah, that's literally the Can You Feel It Mr. Krabs episode. Yeah, okay. Oh, I get it. That had to have been one of the most regurgitated Spongebob quotes I've ever had, like, I've ever heard in my life. Like, you feel it now, Mr. Krabs? Anytime someone says, like, are you feeling it now? It's like, Mr. Krabs? <laughs> like, Mr. Krabs. Toten, thank you for the Prime. Love you. And thanks to everyone who's been uh, subbing today. I think we just got a little hype train going, so if anyone's got a Prime to spare, it feels like supporting the grind. I've been going hard for you guys lately, so, you know, feel free to drop a sub. Now's the time. And big shouts to Toten and Skunk and everybody else. Silexus, Jordan, Chizzy, those are just some of the names I see right here. Cute chat. Four dimension. <laughs> Legend. Oh, that hurts my soul. I'm going to continue. Mr. Thank you, Dragon Blood. Yes. I feel something after missing that mama proxy. I'll tell you that much. Whoop, I went the wrong way. Ten you know, I'll keep it going. Ten seconds down, like 20-something gems. We'll see if we can't recover this. It is recoverable, it's just gonna be tough. I think it's a good move, like... Uh, it's, it's a good adjustment I've made to my grind between today and yesterday, is that it's like, I'm willing to deal with not, like, a failed mama proxy run. Being willing to deal with that really changes the dynamic of a grind. Maybe not on every run, but just on some runs, like, just, just make it happen with the failed mama. I have to be pretty thorough with these gems, though. So, pandemonium, thank you so much for the bits. 
big meaty claws. Um, I could try it. Yeah, second try mama would technically be faster. Um, yeah, I, I might try that, uh, in a future run. If I fail it again on another run, I'll try that. I prefer a world record run with no mistakes or a world record one with like one mistake that you can- I mean... I'm trying to get the best time that- I know this is not the answer you're looking for, but I'm trying to get the best run I can here, so... Every- I expect every PB- one thing I've learned, I'll put it this way, one thing I've learned is every PB or world record is going to have some mistakes. How bad those mistakes are, or the implications of them, or how many mistakes you have... will vary. But there will always be something you could do better in a speedrun of this game. Uh, so with that said, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'd rather just have a... I'd, I'd, I want both of those things, what you just described. A world record with no mistakes and a world record with one mis... What's a, here's the thing, is a world record with no mistakes doesn't exist in this game, you know? I mean, you could say, like, in a broad sense that, like, oh, okay, he didn't miss any major errors or whatever. But you could also, on that same coin, you could always be like, oh, well, the movement could be a little cleaner in this, like, little spot, and say, like, frames, you know? So does that count as a mistake? It's something, they're both something to be improved, right? So it just depends on how you, like, look at mistakes and the value of them and all that shit. But yeah, I, I do, I do uh, concede that, like, a lot of the goal with speedrunning, like, trying to get world records and the best time you can, is to eliminate major, you know, obvious mistakes. That is, like, part of the goal, for sure, but I don't think it's, like, the whole, it's not the whole goal, you know? That's, that's the only way I can really put it. Does anyone else believe in spiral lore? In every level? Like, every world has a story which you need to speculate, especially- Yeah, I mean, everybody in my chat fucking does that shit, because you guys are all a bunch of goddamn weebs with your fanfics and your deviant art and shit, so yeah. I'm familiar with people like, you know, drawing connections between different levels and being like, Oh, these levels are share world- Or like, you know, there's a fucking war between Breeze Harbor and, uh, Zephyr. You know, whose side are you on? You know, it's like all that shit. Like, dude, I don't give two f Me, personally, I'm not big on the on the lore aspect of this game. I think, this is just my take, I think part of, like, what makes a game like, like, like Spyro so awesome is that it doesn't shove exposition or lore down your throat. It leaves it open. It's like, if you want to give a fuck about the, what the dragons are or what the lore is, you know, that's up to you. But, you know, like, you can also appreciate this game just as much without, like, becoming a total fucking weeb about it and being like, hmm, what is well what would spiral what would spiral look like as an adult? What are Spyro's parents, you know? What about you know, why can't Spyro play? It's like, dude, it's like the game isn't meant to be that deep in my mind. It's like trying to it's like trying to connect the timeline of every Zelda game. Like each of the each of them are meant to be like their own contained stories and experience. They're not there's not meant to be a thread between like, you know, all these like extraneous things. It's it's like out in my viewpoint it's like outside the scope of this game to get like all deep with the lore and stuff you know i feel like to get deep with the lore is like if the devs had done that like that would have been to the detriment of the experience it's just my thought but as a fan if you want to do that and fucking talk shit about you know whatever in my chat like go ahead but just guys kind of my viewpoint is I, I i'm not really like a lore type of in general, I don't really give a fuck about video game stories, to be completely honest with you guys. I'm not the type of dude who fucking plays Last of Us or anything. So just, just fair, just fair, just honesty there, you know? And to that end, I don't really give a fuck about Spyro lore. What's up, uh, Poli? Thank you for the, uh, raid. Appreciate that. But yeah, no dis disrespect to any of you guys who are into that sort of thing. Yo, Vin, thank you for the good luck. You do it in your own headspace so you don't pose it. 
Yeah, I mean, there's no disrespect. It's just like, don't expect me to engage with like lore related like discussion. It's all quite silly to me. But if it, you know, if it's fun for you, like, it's chill. I'm not here to hate on the way you guys like enjoy a game, you know. What's up, Just Joe? Good evening to you. Hope you're doing well. What's that little badge you have next to your name? A little controller? Never seen that before. Oh, it means you're a dev? That's cool. What game are you working on? You, would you mind sharing? You don't you don't have to say. You can just kick back and enjoy the stream if you wish. I don't mean to put you on the spot or nothing. I've been following a game lately that's uh it's all about uh like rally car racing. Like kinda looks like Sega Rally almost, but it's like in a parking garage. I forgot what it's called though. It's fun following the development of Cool, like little indie games, I guess. Driver, not, yeah, the the indie game that's currently being worked on, Driver. <laughs> yeah, Driver. Yep, just a little indie game, you know, that no one's heard of. <laughs> oh wow, amazing! Congrats on that, Joe. You deserve that. You you deserve that badge, man. Shit, man, they should be giving you even more than a badge. They should give you a whole ass fucking, uh... I don't even know what. They, they should just give you Twitch mod for that, honestly. They should give you global mod. Forget, forget the game dev badge. Uh, fucking, I, I, I did something. Type, type ass badge. Day, instead of driver, day over. <laughs> With my face on it. Sounds good. What's up, gnome guy? Thank you for the good luck. Okay, we're good. We're good. Chilling. Um, I'm gonna go on the left side, but I might die. Ooh, we're good. Not die, but I almost got hit. I think we're chilling. Need an ass badge. I was talking about making like a custom badge just for Craig because he's the only person that's like over 80 months subbed. And just make it his face like the emote. <laughs> like, Craig could just have his face all over this chat. I think Stuart Copeland's best work was High Caves. Uh, sure. I'm not like a Copeland super fan or anything, just FYI, so I don't really have a huge opinion on his best work. Slipped off the joystick. Yeah, the numbers next to the level names are the, in parentheses, those are the ideal gem count that I collect for each level at the end that you'll see on the return home screen. And then um, for the home worlds in brackets, it's the, uh, it's the total gem count, which is red um, on the entry of the first level of the following home world. 
If that sounds confusing, don't worry about it. It's just the gem counts. Oops. Yeah, ideal. Because, like, look, you can, you're, you're going to not always grab all the same gems every run. So, yeah, there's, like, an ideal gem count for every level on given the route that you decide to do through it. So that's just what those numbers are. I'm usually going to be missing some gems compared to the ideal jump. Now, for some levels, I might even go over a little bit, you know, depending on how I decide to play them. But in general, uh, I'm usually going to be under the ideal gem count. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm under gem. The total gem count it is, however, adjusted for a non-ideal, for a more practical weight. Um, so the thing, and that's why I have those total gem counts in brackets, because that's like a more practical measure. And the ones in parentheses are a more, uh, like the, the, uh, the brackets are a more practical measure for the whole, how you're doing in the whole run with your gem count. And the ones in the brackets are a more theoretical measure for how many you could get in a given level and how many you've missed, you know what I mean? In that level. So it's like kind of like two different weights there, you know? But, uh, you know, none of that matters if I'm not actually reading the fucking gem counts, which I rarely do. The truth is, is I only really pay attention to, like, two or three gem counts throughout the run. I only really pay attention to three. Um, it's entering Wild Flight. I check my total gem count to know how ballsy I can be in Bog in the next few levels. Um, I check my gem count exiting Metalhead, which really I should check it entering Metalhead, but I check it exiting Metalhead to see if I'm on track to do the correct strats for Jock. And then I check it one more time entering Jock just to make sure everything is exactly correct. And then I do whatever strat I need to do in Jock to exactly at that point get 6,000 gems to exit Dreamweavers. So it's all these numbers are just meant to kind of guide you along the way to hit exactly 6,000 at the end. If I'm down or or ahead, you know, that'll just that'll just influence my gameplay if I'm paying attention. It doesn't like fully super change the routes in a huge way, just like, oh, I can skip this little chunk right here or I can or I have to go out of my way for this, you know, type of thing. You missed the Magic Raptor's jump scare? Yeah, when it randomly just like played the fucking Metalhead music. Oh god, I did the wrong strap. It just randomly played the fucking Metalhead music. I remember that. Like, what the fuck? What's up, Lane? Yeah, I'm doing- I'm definitely doing better emotionally today than I was yesterday. Yesterday, I was just- I took my approach and expectations and just like- Yeah, just, just my approach was just a little too hardcore. And I really burnt myself out by the end of the grind. Today, I'm feeling a lot more chill. Obviously, I'm willing to like no reset this run and whatnot. Do I think turning off the music would help focus on speedrunning? Uh, no. No, the music doesn't distract me. As long as I can still hear the gems, like, that's all that matters. As far as, like, uh, the main categories are concerned. Some categories you don't even care about gem collection, like Vortex, for example. And in those categories, you really don't even need game sound at all. gonna make it. Yeah, I figured it wouldn't. I was like, took the damage abuse a little too far away. It's a shame I missed Mama Proxy. I feel like I'm really starting to lock in here on this run. I'm feeling good. I'm glad I decided to not reset it, even though it may or may not, it probably won't PB. It still feels good. It was a solid uh, Magic Crafters overall. 
So yeah, right here I won three, four, eight, five, which is exactly how much I got there. So I'm like exactly on track here to, I could even skip like a couple gems and bog if I wanted to be ballsy. Not too many, but like a few. Yeah, the cute little boat norks. Isn't it funny how like a lot of the, the norks in these flight levels aren't aggressive to you in any way? They're just existing and vibing and we're just coming in here and just killing all of them. Really makes you think, man, who are the real bad guys in this game? Yeah, we are though, dude, exactly, Xylexus. Hit the nail on the head. Yeah, they have little jobs. They gotta ride their boat in a circle. It's very, very helpful to the Nork economy that they do that. <laughs> It'd be cool if this game was like self-aware like that, like how kind of like how Undertale is that it like it would reward you for doing like a pacifist run. It'd be cool if that, that was like a thing in this game. Or conversely, like, you know, give you a secret ending if you actually kill every Nork, you know? Of course, I don't think a pacifist run is possible in this game because uh, too many gems are held within enemies. So you like have to kill enemies in order to get enough gems to exit the Dream Weavers, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I mean, you technically... Yeah, 120% is technically a... Uh, Genocide run, I guess. Follow that logic, yeah. Um, no, you have to, if you don't get all in one on a flight level, then you will at least, at the most you could get, um, hold on. The way flight levels do gems is a little funky. Um, you only get, each flight level has 300 gems. But, um... You only get all 300 if you kill all four, you know, all in one. If you kill everything in one go. If you even miss one thing, your the amount of gems you get is almost half. So, <laughs> missing the la which is kind of a common occurrence if you're playing casually, is you'll miss, like, the very last thing. You literally get punished, like, 140 gems for that, basically. Isn't that crazy? And if you miss more stuff, obviously you're gonna be missing even more gems for that. I'm practicing high caves and you're going crazy trying to flame charge the big wizards. Uh, any suggestions? Try like going off to the side of them instead of flame charging directly into them. Try like getting close to them. Obviously you wanna play with different like um, distances that you're flame charging from. But also think about, are you like holding up? You know, are you like walking into them as you do it? Cause the flame, you can be walking during the flame frame and then that can influence kind of your position on the actual charge frame. And conversely, if you do it off axis, like not in the middle of them, but off to the side, you can give yourself a wider window that way. So try different, uh, try just different angles and spacings and walking and not walking and, you know, different, you know, just, just get, just try a lot of stuff like that. You'll eventually find something that does work. Um, and don't feel bad if you're not getting it because those wizards are extremely hard to flame charge. Those are like some of the hardest enemies just because they have such massive hitboxes. So, if you don't get it right away, it's like, it's pretty understandable, you know, don't, don't, don't beat yourself up or anything. 
Flame charging is a technique that really like takes a long time to master in this game. Like for me, it's like, you guys watch me, like just me making that gem home in right there from that thief, like you couldn't even barely tell that I flame charged him. Like it just happened so automatically and naturally for me. But that really was a skill that like I had to like hone for years to like really get, really get that comfortable with. Four hundred there, nice. Yeah, if you're bonking into them, no, no. So, uh, try letting go of the charge more quickly. That'll help as well. You don't need to be charging for as long as you might think. If you watch my flame charges, I let go like well before like a bonk can occur. So that's another way of looking at it. If bonks are the issue. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, I don't need that other one. That's fine. We're good. I thought I wasn't making it. I got very lucky. Oh. Wasting time here. Thank you, uh, not zero. Bad movement here. I'm losing a few seconds. What's up, Spyro fan? Doing all right. I'm doing pretty well today. The vibes are, as I've said many times today, the vibes are extremely chill. Way more chill than yesterday. Yesterday I was like trying way too hard to lock in and fucking get a PB. It's just like, today I'm just more relaxed and just enjoying the game. Which is good. That's a good thing. And this isn't like the worst run ever or anything. Like, this could definitely still 37. You know? As I go on with this grind, I feel like I'm locking in more and more as well. So definitely going to do some more runs after this one. Almost like someone could just gift a sub the things are so chill. I mean, hey, that is, a, that is a hypothetical that I would not be mad about. Thanks for the good luck, Dragonbirds. Good to see you. Oops. Not getting the extra there. I didn't check my gem count exiting metal, but hopefully it's fine. Green spark's not good here. Uh, we're gonna have to grab the extra mushrooms. In dream weebs. Anonymous, oh. thank you for the gift. Appreciate that. It's a glib glove. Chugger's in the chat. Chugger. Am I running Spyro 2 again soon? Still loving Spyro 1 percent Um, yeah, I will get back to, to Spyro 2 soon. I haven't forgotten about it. I just, you know, I'm obviously just so preoccupied by this grind right now. I'm, I'm gonna just keep doing this game until I'm, until I'm done. I should have grabbed the other uh, mushroom there. That was kind of my bad, but whatever. Let's see if we can get the flop for the fans. Ooh, close. That was a close one. Probably gonna be like 
15, 16 seconds behind here. Pep with the gift. Thank you, Pep. Appreciate that. I actually had it there. I should have exited on that. To avoid this uh, exit animation, the, he flies up like that. Normally we crash into a wall, but if you miss that guy, you can't do that. So I was trying to frame perfectly pause. You have to pause the exact same frame that you hit him in order for that to count. I actually, th I think I did get the frame. I was able to to pause buffer enough to actually get the right frame, but I just didn't, didn't secure it. It was hard to tell. All right, 36, and then there's a five outside, so... Therefore, I think I can skip the yellow, but I need to grab some extra, extra twos in the... Whoa. Oh my... <laughs> this move... No! The... No! Ah. Oh. Okay, whatever. Sparksless jock. I don't care. Who cares? Not me. I don't care. Who's ever been bothered by that? Not me. I remain unfazed. Give me the key. No. Okay, I'm alive. Damn it! I gave myself a fucking cake glitch. Right, there we go. Or not the glitch, but... This is such a bad job. Come on. Give me that. No, through the sparks. Oh, shit. Uh, painful. Give me the key, you cocksucker. <laughs> I'm gonna be like 30 seconds behind here or something. If I'm lucky. Here goes my 37 cry. I right, mean, this run wasn't gonna PB. I'm not too heartbroken about it. Being on the brink of world record would keep you- Hold on, do I have enough? Okay, yeah. Being on the brink of world record would keep you very motivated. Yeah, dude, that's kind of where my head's been with this game. That's kind of why I don't want to go back to Spyro 2. It's just like, it is very motivating being this close to world record. It's like, dude, it, it, I, I have a lot of, like, yeah, it's just very motivating. I have a good purpose here. And it's fun just to play the game. Let's see, you know. Okay, let's see if we get this. Yes! Another first try, dude. Both my no resets today have been first try rats. Unfortunately, they've, both, they've all been shit runs, but... Oh, well. I think I'll do credit skip here just so I can hop into another run. With the quickness. No, watch. I'm gonna get like a a good run. Guarantee, I'm gonna get a good run today, and it's gonna be like a tenth try rat or something. It's gonna be awful.
toast. GG's. I just did that to skip the credits, by the way. To those who are curious, I did not feel like watching the credits. I feel like doing another run. So, I thought, let me also uh, turn up the brightness on this webcam. Three, two, one, go. Let's get it. More runs. Very chill grind today, dude. We're almost at the four hour mark. I remember around this point yesterday, I was really losing my fucking mind. Okay, rolling. So much easier oh, to play when you just take the fucking pressure off yourself, you know? So let's see if we can actually get a good pace here or not. I might be willing to reset some bad early games if I must. I'm not gonna, I'm not like fully like on no reset mode or anything. We'll see what happens. <sighs> yeah, I've done runs with shirts on. I have done it, believe it or not. I actually started my stream today wearing a shirt. Most streams I actually start wearing a shirt. So I'll be like cold and stuff. Well, I'm cold, I'm not afraid to put on a shirt. It ain't, it ain't no uh, political statement from me to be shirtless, it's just more comfortable. Mother and I send our love. Thank you, Resident Evil and Resident Evil's MILF mom. Okay, rolling. Oh, it's been peaceful. Thank you for the good luck, Blue Eye. <laughs> Here come the yawns. I actually was noticing this around the four hour mark of my run yesterday as I'd start yawn. I'm actually like starting to get like sleepy. So let's see if we don't start yawning like every fucking two seconds. Keep the focus up. Sorry to everyone who's secondhand uh, getting sleepy from me here. Get yawned. Get yawned on. those ribs in the oven. I should have done that before. If I reset this run, someone type ribs in the chat, okay? I'm making ribs tonight. I, I should have put them in the oven like an hour ago, but I'll at least start them my next run. Ribs.
Yeah, today's another rib day, so, you know, last time I cooked ribs, I, I PB'd. So, just saying. What flavor? They're, uh, pork... They're pork spare ribs. Um... And I put a smokehouse garlic rub on them with a little bit of extra garlic powder. And I have them currently sitting in the fridge, double wrapped in aluminum foil, ready to be thrown into the oven. I'm going to cook them a little hotter today, I think, like 340, maybe 330. For a good, like, two hours. Crack those bitches open, glaze them the last 15, 20. I lost some time on that uh, town square, but we're moving. Sides, uh, we don't have any crazy sides right now, but I'll pro I might do homemade mashed potatoes. If I'm too lazy, I'll just fucking microwave like a couple potatoes for me and Sarah. Do that. We also have some leftover uh, three bean salad that we made, which is really good. So between all that, we should be good. I also have a couple of leftover beef skewers as well that I made last night. Those were good. Yeah, three whole beans, three whole cans of beans, I should say. Do I base them? Oh, what? the steaks, the little um, skewers. I did actually kind of base them a bit. I made like a glaze for them. I love glazing meat. It's fun. It's like glazing your mom's ass. I can't believe I got here right at the start of the greatest run of all time. I hope so, man. We'll see what happens. So far, this you know run's looking more like a Could be good. Who knows? Delicious, Liam. I gotta come to your place for breakfast sometime. A little bed and breakfast. I'll reset. I'll put my ribs in the oven. I'll be right back. See what happens? See how easy that was, guys? All I had to do was just put them in the oven. I didn't have to rub them or anything. That's the power of prepping your ribs before stream. Three, two, one, go. Okay, rolling. Oh, it's been peaceful. I am running a little low on energy, I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's actually not a giant letter G, it's a, it's a spiral formation. Excuse me. And it's meant to, uh... It's meant to signify the endless spiral that is, uh, doing spyro speedruns. You know, on one end, I am spiraling into insanity, uh, doing the same thing over and over. 
But on the other end, I'm exploring a spiral into self-growth and self-realization through this hobby. So in any case, I'm going down this endless rabbit hole that is a spiral through Spyro. Or G for gay. G for gay works too. We'll take that. That's also a good... I'm, I'm open to any artistic in, uh, interpretations. Interplications. Interpretations. Yeah, once you see the G, you can't unsee the G. And you guys probably can't tell from the camera, but that that uh that art it's made out of acoustic foam panels. My mom like bought me like 200 of them on Amazon. In fact, I have a bunch more behind the camera that spell a giant like letter like penis. <laughs> they spell the word penis like across like both walls. I was definitely a that the the whole art project of like putting up all the foam panels took me like a good two and a half days. They took a while. I'm glad I did it. Dragon badly. Yeah, good shit, Clueless. Now I figured it would have looked pretty lame if I had just put all the acoustic foam just like in in like a square formation, you know, like. It would have been like two like cheesy YouTuber vibes, you know. It would have like it would have looked it looked like a fucking like Shift's webcam, you know. I would have been looking like discount Shift over here, you know, <laughs> with all the acoustic foam. I'm I'm glad I did it my way. Those smelling salts, dude. Fucking Joe Rogan. <laughs> that shit will wake you up. That shit will put hair on your balls. You tried streaming yesterday? What were you trying to play, Time Traveler? I'll raid you one of these days. I don't know if I'm following you. Oh, come on. I tried so hard to play him. I got like a weird wall glide on the fucking enemy. YouTube guys, we got some tired gamers here. I mean, that's why I don't stream like at like late night for me. It has to be in like the afternoon. I get sleepy in it.
Oh, you're doing the yeah, that's right, the Call of Duty Easter egg. Yep. Good luck with all that. Do I find that I picked up any percent routing easier or the completion routing easier? Just to learn. Um, God, I mean, you know, I learned both these categories like a long time ago. I relearned any percent more recently. Um if you're starting from zero, I think what you're asking is like starting from zero, like not knowing any routes or anything. Um, I think it's probably easier to just learn the shorter category, which it would be any percent. Uh, but for me, it was more challenging to relearn any percent, like in paying paying attention to gem counts like more closely, which is not something I would recommend like a beginner to get too, too concerned about. Ugh. I might know reset soon. Cool time traveler. Yeah, Bex was on her fucking grind, dude. Like, I'm actually really proud of that. You see that I PB to I did not PB tonight. I maybe I will PB tonight if that's what you're saying. Three, two, one, go. Let's get it. I will say my uh my level of Gameplay is kind of deteriorating a little bit, but I'll, you know, I'll keep trying a little bit here and then I might just YOLO a no reset at some growing. point. Oh, it's been peaceful. <laughs> Oops, I thought I was still on the intro cutscene, my bad. Yeah, okay, yeah, if that's what you're asking, like, just, like, which category I prefer is what you're asking. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely prefer 120, and part of that, I think, is, like, what you're saying. Like, it just feels better to do the completion run. Like, I guess you could say it's, like, a completionist mentality. Now, nowadays, I like both runs, you know? Okay, rolling. Oh, it's been peaceful. And of course, at a high level, it does come down to like what tricks and strats you're specifically implementing and how much you like really like those as well, you know, in speedrunning. But just in terms of just like the overall like get everything versus just get enough to beat the game, I'm definitely more of a get everything type of guy. Are there many active runners in 120%? I would say yes. Um, there's... you. Usually you'll see some people uh, playing at any given time. Um, Spora has been grinding, notably lately, a, a lot for 122. Same thing with... Uh, right, isn't Spora going for like 120? Yeah, 122, 123, something like that. Um, same thing with uh, Piggy, who is also grinding for 122 on emulator, which is pretty amazing, considering that that loses like 40 seconds to a minute. And, um, yeah, sometimes you'll see, like, random people like, uh, you know, Leppy, Leppy Jopy. Online. These are all people that stream on Twitch, by the way. I, I noticed that that was a YouTube question. So you might want to, you might want to follow Spyro on Twitch just in case you're missing any of that. I don't think any of those people stream on YouTube. There's also other people who I'm forgetting as well. I think Norkson was doing 120 recently. Nor Shout out to Norkson for that. So yeah, there's definitely people that, that play these categories. It's not just like me and Laura and Ash, you know? <laughs> Three, two, one, go. That's right, I keep forgetting about those 120 races. Okay, rolling. Yeah, Technicolor oh, Pixie, pretty cool. Peace. So everything come across proper. It seems like most runners lean one way or another, and the factor of like, yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, like when you get into speedrunning, like you gotta pick the category that you like the most. So like, whatever you think that's gonna be. Even if you're a new player, like I don't know what I like. Just like watch a couple runs and be like, all right, which one do you like the most? You know, like you don't have to like. It's not like you have to commit to it and be like the only play that your whole life. But you know, maybe you want to try like a bunch of different cat. Do a blind run of every category and see which one you like. But whichever one you're gonna actually devote the time to like learning routes, it's probably going to be the one you like the most, for whatever reason. Be it it's like a cool run, or does, it does interesting tricks, or the routing is neat, or the concept is neat, or maybe you're just a completionist, so you do the 100%. There's like a lot of reasons for, the, for why someone might learn a category. 
maybe it's just as simple as like, oh, you, all of your friends or people that you like are running a certain category, so you just want to run that alongside them. You know? There's definitely that community uh, aspect as well. So yeah, there's a lot of lot of possible motivators. It was definitely like that with a uh, vortex, where like a lot of it became like this real like community thing. Like everyone would hang out in like certain like vortex players' discords and hang out and like search for strats and grind runs and talk and play music and stuff. Like you don't really see like a whole lot of that in Spyro. So that that was like a interesting. That was like from 2020 to 2022. That's it is the category has since died down a bit, uh, with the exception of composer grind. Uh, you know, getting the first ever sub 20. You know, some other players getting scattered PBs here or there. Anchovy still grinds the Vortex, of course. I think Ash also uh, tied Anchovy at some point as well. You'll stop the strike. No, it's cool. Don't worry about it. Your first 120 will be on Saturday. Hey, good luck, Slambo. said the other day that most people run on emulator. Uh, no, I did not say that. I, I believe that was probably a misinterpretation on your part. A, a lot of people play on emulator, but a lot of people also play on console. Sorry or useless. Is that a physical console? Or you're, so you're asking about emulators. Or do you mean like... Okay, so... If I'm understanding your question correctly, let me focus for a moment. You're asking... For people who speedrun on emulator, is the emulator they use a physical console or is it something on their PC? The answer is the latter. It is something on their PC. Now, if you play on PS3 or PS4 or whatever, the digital download, it's not recommended that you do that because that is a form of emulation. But um, it's a bad form of emulation. You're better off just playing with a uh, leaderboard approved emulator like Duck Station on a PC, even a bad PC. Three, two, one, go. But really, whatever way you can play the game or get your hands on it, you know, just play on whatever you got. You don't have to, obviously, if you're new, you don't have to play on like the fucking fastest platform or anything. Okay, rolling. Oh! But yeah, when we refer to emulator, we're usually referring to people playing with like a controller plugged into their PC using something like Duck Station or EPSXE. Uh, so yeah, is your mom single? Asked an interesting question. Because Laura and Ash are tied for first, does that mean I'm second? Uh, that's actually no. The answer is no. I, I'm actually still in third because it, it, the way the leaderboard works is it, because they're tied, it would say first, then first, and then third. I'm still technically in third place because there are two people ahead of me. Is another way to think about it. There just is no second place. Did Ricky say how many races will there be? I mean, he hosts one every week. So if you're not in his Discord for that, I mean, hit him up. He, he will surely invite you. Even if he doesn't know you or whatever, if you just send him a DM on Twitter or something. The next race, I believe, is going to be Jack and Daxter, no LTS, this Saturday. So you can probably still get in on that if you uh, hit him up.
The beginning of this game reminds you of a weirdness with the idea of a TV existing in the gaming world because it's like our TV news reporter, like in the intro. Like when the grunt is fil filming the prophet's speech in Halo 2. Yeah, it's like, it really, there's a lot of implications to like having like a piece, like in world media, right? Like okay, so there's television. There's there's reporters, but there's no televisions. It's like kind of like what you're saying. It's like there's a camera. There's clearly like the concept of a camera, but then like where where is the actual media going? You know, it's a, it's an interesting question. Again, I'm not one to get too deep on the lore, so I'll leave you guys to deliberate on that. Yo, Dylan, thank you for the good luck, dude. Dylan, 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 Dylan. Bex going to bed. Have a great night, Bex. Love you. <laughs> you guys better be nice in the chat without Bex being around. Just don't need no hooligans causing issues. What's up, Petey? Thanks for the nice cock. You too, bro. I think I'm going to try to no reset this run. I'm just really not feeling like grinding too much more today. We're about at the four hour mark. You know, we no reset this. It'll be like a four and a half hour stream. I think that's enough for me today. Personally. I pushed myself extra hard to like the over five hour mark yesterday. It just did not feel good. It was not worth it. And I'm definitely already feeling the diminishing returns with being a little tired, being a little hungry. I think this run has to be an open set. So hype up. Let's see if it's a good one. See if Mama fucks us. See if Mama gives us a chance at a good run here. Yeah, what up, Laura? 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 I'm doing good. Uh, this is gonna be like this is like my last run. I, you just probably just got here. This is gonna be my last run of the day. So we're, I'm hoping for a good Mama here for my last no reset. If it's a bad Mama, we will continue. No bitches. It was a bad one. It's a bad one. I'll take, you know what? I'll take a death and I'll try it one more time. Cause that is technically faster. Storm. There we go. No. Oh man, I'm gonna be so behind. I might reset this. That's the problem. That's the problem with taking the death. Now I'm like even more behind. Uh. Let's take it to the end of the split and see how we're feeling. God damn, that is soul crushing. Yeah, let's, 
let's let's keep it let's keep the no reset vibe here but i'll make a call once we exit this level if it's like we'll see if it's like plus 20 plus 30 i might continue we'll just i'll just do whatever my heart tells me Like, thank you for the uh, gift sub. It's great to see you, Like, as always. No bitch sub. The only bitch here I see is you. So, the wrong way, that bird. I am going to have to jump down for the gems. Normally, I would, like, skip over the gems at the end here, but I'm just going to grab them. Or actually, no, I'm not, because uh, I did grab the gold, so should be all right. Yeah, 281. It's 26. I'm just going to continue. Secret Octopus, thank you for the Prime, appreciate that. I'm just gonna continue, I don't- I really don't feel like resetting much more at this point, so we're just gonna make it happen. Sorry, Pace Pals. Do 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 do. This is my big key here, is that there's no rush for a PB. That's the thing I had fucked up yesterday the most, I think, is that I was really in a rush. Like, and that even reflected in the gameplay, you know? That shit will subconsciously affect your gameplay. But it's really like, you feel the pressure of this like world record, like on the cusp of being broken. Like, dude, I just want to get there before I can't, you know, do it anymore. Or before someone else gets to it before me. But it's like, you know what? When I when I took a... When I, when I fucking raided Ash yesterday and I saw just how chill they were, like, just how level-headed... Like, yeah, I even joked in the chat with Laura, like, yeah, Ash all level-headed out here. Meanwhile, Laura and I about to throw our fucking TVs out the window having existential crises and shit. You know? It, like, really gave me such a fucking perspective that it's like, holy fuck, like, there's no rush here. Like... Well, the world record in this category is so good. Like, chance, it's like, it's definitely not confirmed that anyone's gonna get it in the next few days or anything. And if they do, that shouldn't affect what my grind is. You know, I should want to just be getting the best time I can get regardless of what whatever someone else does. And when I really, like, thought about that last night and started applying that today, dude, I just feel so much better. I just feel so much better than I did before, because before I was just like, dude, I have to fucking get it, blah, blah, blah. That's just so much pressure. The more pressure you put on yourself in this hobby, the worse, the worse things end up becoming. Yeah, I've just I've been having fun today. In all honesty, it's like and and, and dude, it really it all culminates in this run as well because, like, I can't PB this, you know. Like, I should reset, right? But no, like, I can fucking get a good run tomorrow, you know? Like, I put in a good grind today. I'm tired, I'm hungry, like, let me just no-reset this and have fun, you know? Oh, it's like, holy shit, it's like, then it's like, oh my god, now I'm actually, like, thinking about having fun and stuff now? On a world record grind? You know, like... Like, the two things don't have to be so diametrically opposed. Hey, Ricky. Ricky, I think there was someone in my chat that was, uh, trying to, uh get in on the uh, race discord that you got. So yeah, keep your eye out. Yeah, you guys like the ASMR? Dude, this mic is super ASMR. I'm 
sounded like Joe Rogan had sex with Neil deGrasse Tyson type beat. <laughs> yeah, we're synced, Book. Our stomach's being empty and whatnot. Yeah, I got some ribs in the oven right now. I'm going 340 Fahrenheit. Double wrap. I'm going to eat a party. I should have put them in earlier, though, because Sarah's going to get home and I'm going to have to be like, uh, these ribs need like another hour. Uh, I'm going to have to like make her. Uh, I'll, I'll make her the leftover skewers from last night. Give her something to hold her. And then that'll be good too, because I'm a lot less over good, so. Strats. Chili glaze, that sounds odd. I would do that. Like, use like um, a chili oil, you're saying? But the thing is, is uh, Sarah won't eat it if I do that. She's She doesn't like spicy stuff. She'll eat like a little bit of spicy, but she like a chili glaze might be unless I make it like a really sweet chili glaze. Then she probably won't rock it. I'm glad you say so, Dad Kula. Yeah, the cool thing with this mic is it allowed me to, um, since this, since I am running this mic hotter, like, it's just generally louder than what I was using before. Um, because of that, I'm able to, uh, not, uh, you know how, like, uh, sometimes the game will turn, if you guys watch Hypnoshark, like, the game turns down whenever he talks. Um, I don't have to have that anymore, that, what's called ducking anymore, which is nice. You can just hear me over the game. Even if I am competing with it a little bit, I feel like that's better if the focus of the stream is on the game. And then also that way I can easily cut out the gameplay only if I ever get like a PB I'm really proud of. And not have to worry about the audio being all, all over the place. Cool stuff. Oops. Oh my fucking god, hello. What did, did that guy have a blue or a green? We'll see. stuff here. Could have saved some time. This was one of the levels I could have saved some time in. But alas. Oh uh, yeah, when I got fucked on the stairs near the start. Yeah, Laura taught me that, I think. Or just like one of the... One of the moves. Yeah, I think Laura told me about that. You gotta hold X on that. Or somebody, I don't know if it was Laura, but somebody taught me that. It's like anytime you see me like rolling up something, it's just me holding X. Like you don't even repress X to get a jump there. It buffers the jump when there's a roll animation. It's very similar in uh, Mario 64, actually, how you can... Uh, you can jump kick up um, up surfaces that would make you slide down. That roll mechanic is like a slide down mechanic. So if you uh, if you buffer in the jump before landing on it, then it just auto auto jumps. One of the few examples of actually buffering an input this game actually. Yeah. 
That is to say, like pressing it you know, before it comes out. First day at a new job. Forgot to badge reader. They sent three goons to come detain you. What the hell? Oh, like your work badge. That's spooky. It's your first day. They'll, they'll cut you some slack, I'm sure. But hopefully besides that, the job's going nice. By the way, shoutouts to, I don't think I shouted him out, but Secret Octopus with the Prime earlier. Love you, Octopus. It's a cute name. Oh, man. Wait for this guy. Dude. Awful stuff here. They were pissed till you told them it went well, you were nervous for it. Yeah, they were chill. This is all good, man. Oh my god, I like landed right on the edge, what the hell? Like doing roof jump after getting the big mama launch in the first one. Well, you know, that uh, that's actually the second world. And uh... Yeah, yeah, that's correct actually. We do hold X for that roll. Anytime you see me doing like a rolling jump, I'm usually holding X before hitting the ground with that. That is a, a good example of that. Rat Proxy as well is another example where, depending on where you land, you could get a, a rolling jump, so you just have to hold X on the glide before you land. Which is why sometimes you'll see, like, the movement, if you don't get a rolling jump, but you are holding X, you'll see runners like myself kind of hesitate before jumping there. It's because we're holding X when we land, so we have to, like, repress it on reaction. Instead of, uh, anticipating it like we would with any other jump. DK Oldies didn't send Ripto's Rage with your trilogy order. That's fucking annoying. Classic DK Oldies. Insert fuck DK Oldies rant in my chat. I ordered a pepperoni pizza from DK Oldies and they just sent me this fucking NES Tetris championship edition for worth two thousand dollars these fucking assholes i don't even like tetris so anyways fuck dk oldies one star review I'm lucky. The few times I bought stuff off DK Oldies, it wasn't too bad. I just buy like loose discs, you know, like Spyro or whatever. Now I don't have to do that. Now that my PS2 is mecha pwned, I can just burn Spyro to a disc and, and speed on it. The best game in your opinion, Spyro 2. Yeah, Spyro 2 is a cool one. I definitely don't on hate. I don't hate on anyone if you like prefer one of the trilogy Spyro games over the other. Ah, oh, dude, I keep forgetting to do the IL strat. Dummy. Must 
muscle memory too strong. I, that's one of those things I just have to be actively thinking about. The start of each level. Oh no, that's the worst case scenario. Ooh, I almost charged up there like an idiot. Oh, this run sucks. <laughs> God damn, I'm probably gonna be like a minute behind here or something. Let's see if we can get- okay, new goal. Let's keep this run less than a minute behind. Crazy, those guys came up with gold skin. Who, Tuval? Yeah, Tuval is pretty crazy for that. And yes, it is still used in runs. Squish Wizard in the background. Squisher. Yeah, most uh, a lot of a lot of runs still use a uh, gold skip. It's pretty. It's pretty like pretty much required <laughs> in like a lot of runs to do that. That's why Spyro 2 is such a fucking annoying game to speedrun. Like the, the barrier to entry by like doing ground to portal and gold skip and. Early fireball and dragon shores, like the, all those things require you to have a really good grasp on the mechanics of the game and like the specific tricks therein. Which can be kind of rough for new speedrunners. It's like if you want to do a blind run, it's like you basically have to do like an entirely different type of play. You have to do like a casual playthrough where you like buy everything you know, normally. Or you like do all this really hard stuff to get to the end early, which if you're new will take you fucking forever. It's just like, it's kind of like pick your poison. Three, four, nine, five. That's actually a good gem count. What's not good is the pace. <laughs> I'm like a minute behind. Let's see what the damage is after this split here. Hey, you guys can still hear me fine over the game though. Right? Even though I'm talking kind of more quietly right now. I'm trying to debate whether I want to turn the game volume down a little bit for you guys or not. This is like one of the louder levels, so... I'm good. Oh, yeah. Just some new mic stuff. I sound great. Do you sound great? You look great, Spyro fan. Take a bite out of that house. Selling the weed mung. <laughs> yeah. They okay, were only plus 50, alright? We can save some time on this uh misty bog. I actually have the gems to play it a little ballsy here, so. Let's see if we can get a good time save here. Oh my god, that's a horrible way to start. <laughs> sparks. Luckily there's a Sparks right here at the start, but... I have like no room for error anymore, that's kind of concerning. Why did I charge down? Please make this. Oh, my heart. Some mats. Dude, what am I doing? Hello. <laughs> what the fuck? I have to grab this fodder over here. Okay, I'm not saving time here. Sorry, liberals. I gotta kill these chickens. Yeah, I know. At this point, I'm getting ready for my sparksless grind. <laughs> Dude, he fucking blocked me. Fuck you. He didn't even- he was supposed to run towards- ugh. Ugh. Like, literally, I went sparksless three separate times in this level so far. Not even halfway through. 
Let's just not die. New goal. Survive. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you for typing that. That actually made me feel better reading that. I do have ribs in the oven. That was a, <laughs> that was a welcome, that was a welcome little relief that you typed that. Ribs, that's true. Thank you for the good luck, Kale. Please hit these guys. Okay, nice. You now just don't get hit here. I have a bad feeling about this. Okay. He's gonna get me. Oh my god. He stared into my soul there. Did you see that? For a moment, he was looking at me. He wanted my fucking ass, dude. They were alive. We survived. I dropped like 40 gems there, but we survived. And I only lost a second. Like, that goes to show how much time I have to save in that level, by the way. That was definitely more than a second of time lost. Strawberry with the Risa. You're on your way home. All right. At Strawberry, I have bad news. The ribs are going to take like another hour or so. So just fair warning. But I'll, I'll reheat the skewers for you. I got you. I'll make sure my booby is fed. A safe drive. Still, oh, I'm supposed to grab the sparks behind this level. I fucked up. I might death abuse after um, after this part here. Or actually, no, I can't because there's a dragon. Yeah, maybe. That's why death abusing isn't faster here, because there's this dragon here. Otherwise, we would be able to death abuse back to the dragon before this one. How do you marinate and sauce that shit with the ribs? Um, probably going to, uh, but right now I have it cooking in the oven at 340 Fahrenheit. Uh, double wrapped uh, with just a dry rub on it. Um, like a smoky garlic rub type vibe. Oh, I need to kill those. And um, then like 20 minutes before the end, like I'll let it go for like an hour and a half, like maybe two hours at the most. Um, and then I'll pop open the top layer of uh, aluminum and let it uh, cook down a little bit more while I spritz it with uh, apple cider vinegar. Um, oops. And then I'll glaze it with sweet baby rays. It's like 10 minutes or whatever. Ugh. Slow. Are we finally going over a minute behind here? Finally doing it. There we go. Let's see if we can... Okay, hold on. Now, I said earlier the goal was to finish this run under oh, a minute behind. I still have a chance. We can still clutch up. We can still go ultra ultra lock-in instinct mode. And see if we can get sub one minute behind here. Goyle says, on your way to sell the good ganja. Good luck on the rest of the run. By the way, Goyle works at a dispensary, so that was not illegal for her to say that. Give the ribs a good spanking. Those slutty ribs. Okay, nice. Finally getting that on a run today, thankfully. That's some good news. I've been failing that trick today. It's, there's, it seems like there's always like one thing in this run that like fucks, fucks me in a given day. It's like sometimes I have a bad rat day. Sometimes I can't get that out of bounds. But then it's like I can get everything else except like one thing. Sometimes I can't get mama, you know. It's always just like one thing, you know. That, like everything else goes right, but like... This one fuck. I guess we grab the uh, grab the sparks at least. That works out. Extra gems sitting there from the enemy that would have homed in. I really don't need all these gems, but uh, it's fine. I wouldn't say Mama Proxy was like the worst today. I would say it was like a it was like coin toss status today. I had some good ones and some bad ones. 
Mama wasn't like the bane of my. No, some days you just never get it in a run, and it's like you can't get a run pat. And especially if you commit to like not continuing runs past Mama Proxy if you don't get it. I think that was like a big. That was a big shift in my grind today. Is I was willing to continue a run with with a bad Mama. And I think I think you kind of have to do that if you're gonna grind this category. Like it's okay if some runs you reset over Mama, but it just that just can't be like every run you can't do that. Because some days you're just never gonna have a good fucking Mama again, for whatever reason. But luckily today wasn't one of those like I did get some good Mama, so it wasn't like the end of the world. What's up, poor wax? Do I sound defensive? <laughs> But yeah, shifting into a chiller mindset really made this whole grind like much, much more fun today. Today I just had more fun. I gotta say, even though this runs ass, like and whatever, I'm just having more fun overall, and that's the important thing. Not putting the pressure on the like I have to get fucking world record today, you know? Oh, I'm playing good today, so I have to get like a PB, you know? It's like no, like I'm gonna try to get a PB, you know? Fuck, but. You know, so I'll be willing to reset and whatnot, but I'm not like about to fucking blow my brains out over. It. That's like the key, like distinction. I'm probably like kind of under gemmed here. I'm guessing. We'll see. I didn't check what I was, what the gem count was outside of. And by the way, I could have saved time on that fucking split there and gone under a minute behind. That was like my last big time save of the run. So. Unsurprisingly, this run's probably not going to finish under a minute behind. But whatever, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I wish that guy was closer. Hello? I need him. Wow, Sparks just ignored him. E epic. Game. Sparks just like not wanting anything to do with that mushroom. Normally that mushroom runs directly in front of you, by the way. That was like very rare that the mushroom was that far away. Billy Bob, thank you for the uh, gift. Appreciate it. Close. Definitely been missing that a lot today. I've decided that next time I'm on a PB pace, I'm not gonna go for that. On a run like this, doesn't matter. I, I do like going for it, but I've like I've missed it enough that it's like, all right, I don't got nothing to prove. Um, I got a couple upcoming videos. Have I thought I want to do any more music videos? No. Eventually, I probably will, but uh, right now I'm not interested in making music-related content. I hope that doesn't uh, disappoint you or anything. Right now, all I really care about is grinding this category, and that's about it. Like, I'm really not on, like, a video-making, like, kick at the moment at all. I'm just on a grind set. I'm on that Sigma grind set. It's like a, it's like a balance. It's like a scale for me, like... When I really want to make like a YouTube video, like I, the truth is, is I just have to put my grind kind of on hold for like, you know, a week or a couple days or whatever, you know, go out and stay offline for a few days and just make that shit happen, you know? Just, like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to put in a grind like this, like a really like put my heart into a grind and put my heart into a video at the same time. Those, the, like, it's just, they would just, it just stretches, it would stretch me too thin to do that. Oh wait, how many gems? Uh, 610, that's not good. Probably should have grabbed the greens that were behind me. Let's start. I'll grab this extra green. Spring chest and then probably grab the extra fucking blue outside. Goodness lord, please. Somehow making that. Just do not grab that fucking guy in any percent. I when, when am I gonna learn? Fuck. 
Sparks on strike. Dude, with that fucking butterfly in the home world, that first uh, mushroom. Oh my god, Sparks was definitely making a political opinion with that. I'm just gonna grab this. Okay, should be good now. Thank you for the good luck, Benny. Benny. B -b -b Benny and the B. <laughs> All right, first try. I got first try rat on both of my no resets. If there's one like saving grace, I got first try rat on all my no resets today. Can we get three for three? Oh, I was aimed too far to the right. It was good. It was a good proxy attempt though. Good execution. Just a bad angle choice. I'm gonna try this spot. Oh, I didn't quite get to the right early enough there. That could have worked. Benny and the Norks, true. All right, sub game over. This won't work. Yeah. Again, same issue as the first one. I was too far to the right on the setup. Or the angle was too far right. B -b -b Benny and the penis. Do it for the ribs. Kill the rat for the ribs. Same, dude, I keep doing the same fucking issue. I keep aiming to... I need to aim further left with rats like that. There we go. Classic. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I mean, dude. Why does that song stand the test of time? I mean, it just gets stuck in your head. Good song. Why do you think people, whenever they come up to me, they go like, Day, man. Oh, fighter of the night, man. It's like, it just gets stuck in your head. Deo, Deo. He said, fuck you and I want to come home. Come on, Mr. Tallyman, Tally me banana. No, that's not where my username comes from. My username comes from, uh, in third grade, I used to write the word yo on the whiteboard. This is like a very TLDR version of the story. And people were like, dude, who keeps writing yo on the whiteboard? I'm like, I'm the yo man. And so I made that my RuneScape username. The yo man. That's what it originally meant. 39, 46. I mean, that wasn't the best Sorry, rat in my life, so but uh, whatever. I kind of forgot about you. What about GGs. the nasty Gnork? Nasty Nork? But yeah, don't so be like barbecue sauce and like when you see me in real life for the first time, be like, is that well, the yo man? If you say that, you're cringe. What you can just call you me Dale. Next? I mean, I'm the cringe one for having such a dumb username. But, uh, you know, that's how that goes. GG's, everybody. Um, I really feel like I turned a new leaf today with this grind. I feel like I've removed a lot of the pressure that was uh making me feel pain and emotionally distraught yesterday um i do feel like i was getting some okay paces i didn't get any like crazy like pb paces into beast makers or anything today but i did get some solid paces into magic crafters and you know i mean whatever dude i mean like look it wasn't it wasn't a pacer of a day i'm just gonna be honest with you guys but what it was was it was a real good attitude adjustment day and um I think moving forward, I think I like I like the way I'm doing this. I like the whole like, all right, you know, no reset on every few mamas or so, you know. But it's okay if you do reset a few mamas, but eventually no reset. And just and just chill, dude. Like, there's no fucking rush for this record, man. Like, Ash is probably gonna get it before me. It's okay. It's okay if Ash or Laura or anybody lowers it down to like a fucking 36 for all I care. I'm gonna keep grinding this category and get the time I want which is going to be in the 36 one X's, hopefully in the low 36 one X's. And, you know, and then I'll be, and I'll feel happy to move on. It's, it's not about world record, guys. It's not about that. It's about just putting in a good, it's cool that world record is a, there is a race for world record right now with that particular goal. But, you know, if I, if I lose the race, it's not like I got to change my whole outlook and perspective, you know, it's, there is no race, you know, like, 
even though it's cool that like we're all racing for it there is no race. the more i think of it as a race then the more my my mental my my mindset deteriorates so i gotta just i gotta just take it as it comes man ash is so fucking talented at this game and so is laura they're both so fucking talented at this game and like i i could see either one of them just randomly whipping a fucking 37 zero x out of nowhere you know i can totally see that so you know that's cool. I, I I I I want to wish the best for them. I don't want to be on like an ego trip where I'm like, fuck. I hope they don't do that so I can get world record first. Like, come on, dude. Who like? It's a fucking it's a game, dude. Like, let's not get too crazy. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. You know, let's not get too fucking. Let's not get too big for our britches. And so today we were not too big for the bitches. We were we were bitching. So uh, on that note, I'm gonna find someone to raid, and uh, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Not too big for the bitches. Shut the fuck up. Uh, Shem playing some shit. Bucci playing. Oh, Josh is still doing a subathon. This is his final day, I think. Let's 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 give uh, let's give Josh a raid. He's he's day six on a subathon right now. I think he deserves it. Playing Jack two right now. See you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. I love you all very much. And thanks to everyone who subbed today. Big shouts, Billy Bob, with the gift sub earlier. And thanks to everyone who was on YouTube with the memberships and super chats. Big shouts to Bad Mojo. Um, and uh, who else? There's someone else here. Bad Mojo and oh my God, just let me turn it. Elaine, the YouTube uh, stuff. Cool Goyle, Strawberry, Secret Octopus, Like the Dane, Got Pep. Uh, Anonymous Poli, Panda, Grapes, Dragon Blood, Hype, or er, uh, not Hype Trim, uh, Toten, Skunk, Xylexus, Jord, my raid popping off yet, Chizzy, Freeze Champ, and uh, yeah, Z Ray, some other people, Juicy Nana, Scuffle. How was everybody who subbed today? You guys all deserve a special kiss on the lips. Mwah. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.